What is up, homies? It's your boy, Mike Mason, here for a special Torch Talk. Not to be confused with Torch Talk. This is Torch Talk, our <laughs> online glass festival, as it were. Now, um, man, what a week it's been. The world has gone completely insane, but we're going to do the damn thing here just as we always have. But with some slight changes, I wanted to start a little earlier um, and go a little bit longer with some fun games we're going to play. It's going to be a good time. Uh, thank you to everybody who joined us. Sorry we're just a minute late. Had some trouble with the hangout, but we're good to go. We're going to do this damn thing. I've got some awesome people with me. Um, let me take a moment to, to introduce them, and then we'll get this party started with an incredible demo. Uh, my lovely co-host, Carrie Strope. Tell them, tell them what, what you're about. Uh, well, this week I am all about catching up on life because I was out in western Nebraska for the last two weeks teaching um, some mosaic classes to a couple of high school uh, districts, elementary kids too. Um, I do fuse glass, uh, some mosaic glass, and when I need, I get in the studio to make some stuff. I'm definitely not an expert on the torch, but I have fun playing. And I help Mike film these things for you all. Heck yeah, I really appreciate it. It's great to have you with us. And yeah, the guest of honor... Uh, Dakota, thank you so much for being here and letting me film the demo that we're about to see, man. If if you'd like to just just take a moment, tell them what you're about, give them a little little intro into Dakota's world. Yeah, I'm um, I'm Dakota Madrona, and uh, I'm a glass blower. I'm in Burlington, Vermont, and uh, just uh, got back from Vegas and been ready for uh, possibly Atlantic City and then MGP, which will be my fifth year out there. So, uh, yeah. Very good. Um, uh, Excellent. How many years have you been on the torch, if you don't mind? Uh, coming up on coming up on 10 years, actually. Okay. Uh, wow. Yeah. Um, well, I say that I, uh, I would say I started glass blowing at 18, so I'd be at nine years because I'm 27. Okay. But I took my first couple lessons uh, for about a month and a half to two months long of lessons when I was 16 and then took a break. So I like to just add that in and, you know, and so coming up on 10 years almost, but uh, probably about nine years solid. All right. Very good. That's awesome, man. It's, it's a dream to think somebody can start so young, you know, like I didn't start till I was like 32 or whatever, man. I'm old as hell. So, yeah. you know, it's, yeah, uh, I, I remember, uh, when I worked for the place I was working at and, uh, we had a day where, um, we had to figure out what raw materials I could buy and what, you know, it constituted as a raw material. Cause I was 16 years old. Okay. So I couldn't yeah. buy a pipe. I couldn't actually buy something that was functional. So buying a downstem to alter into a different downstem was like a big gray area. Cause hmm. I, so that that was uh you know there you were all there up were, on your technical skills then huh <laughs> yeah, yeah so there were uh different uh, uh little variables when i was younger but then when i turned 18 i was on the torch a gotcha. lot more often, so. this young man makes the finest incense burners in the game <laughs> or whatever kind of thing. All right, guys. Um, and you know, I was mentioning that we're gonna uh, we're starting a little earlier now. We're gonna go a bit later. I always um, I had this idea about what it would be if we ever did like an in person kind of get together. Like I, I've always maybe wanted to do it at some of these events, like at Glass Vegas or at Champs or at the Beat Expo. You know, why shouldn't we have a little party for ourselves? And I'd always thought to myself, well, what would we do? And, and I always thought it might track the show pretty closely. I'd, I'd want to have like a live glass demo or then maybe we watch some sick footage. And then maybe we play some games together, have a, have a drink. And, you know, with, the, with what's going on, I don't want to dwell on it much. It's just I want to take the opportunity to, to make our show a little bit longer and, and you know, just kind of do what we would have done if we were able to do this in person and... You know, give everybody a chance to get together and kick it in the chat and have some fun. So we're going to play some games later. Um, I've got, you guys, i got a bunch of sticker packs on deck for the homies out there who want to play some games with us. I think some of them might be for people who win the games. Others will just be for who stay and play. Like, all the games have an audience thing, so you'll be able to vote or whatever. Um, we have, from the homie, uh, Ben over at Acadian Glass Works, he donated this tubing and this uh, heat mat. So somebody will win that tubing and somebody will win that heat mat. 
And then, um, man, the homie uh, Andrew Pollock. Uh, man, he has an incredible studio out in uh, Nolens, as locals call it. Uh, Nola. Yeah, and he's offered a hundred dollar gift certificate for somebody to come out and take a class. There's the homie Rashawn Jones. Big shout out, and yo, big shout out to the homie Kai at Kai Dies. If you put that in K Y E, Kai's Dies. He makes these shirts that are like uh, tie dyes with torches on them and stuff. He's nasty with the ties, and he came and showed up and hooked everybody up. Um, so yeah, man, uh, this dude—he's joined us on the show before. Incredible glass worker himself, but he's offered like a hundred dollars off for a class if you want to come out. Whenever it'll be, I guess. Bo Barrett teaching out there, man. Incredible opportunities to learn. So that's on the prize deck as well. I really thank these guys. Um, man, I didn't even ask. They were just like, man, you're doing this thing. Uh, I want to donate some prizes. Like, thank you. Those will be great. So um, I won't delay. Let's let's pop this this uh, show off. Glass Central Station, baby. That's us. We're here. And guys, um, what I get to do here, these companies that you're seeing here for the next minute, uh, they, they all pitch in every month and make it possible for me to go out and film these things and take all this time off of my own torch work, you know, to do all this editing and sorting footage and ordering new batteries and, you know, all the million random things that go into making this happen. These companies are the ones, man, they're pitching in every month. And then some of you guys on Torch Pass, I really appreciate it. Um, because of this support, like, I'm not, not trying to get ahead of myself, but man, like I, I, I'm sitting on enough footage to ride this thing out. We're going to keep having this, this glass party, you know, and, until this, this fucking, all this Corona shit ends, you know, pretty much no matter how long it takes. And it, this just the continual contribution of all these companies and you homies out there pitching in and, you know, not to take away from anybody who's not, not throwing loot at it, just being part of this party is why I get to do this too. So it's just a huge thank you to everybody. And this is what we're going to get to see come together, uh, this incredible piece you made, Dakota. Um, the time frame that you made this in is incredible, too. It's like some guy would spend all day on this and be happy, and you just crushed it. Here, uh, I'm pulling some... Pulling I appreciate some. that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, thank you. Um, yeah, I... I um... Yeah, I don't know what to say. I appreciate that. <laughs> oh, cheers, man. No, it's all good. It's I, yeah, I really, man. I sincerely yeah. do appreciate you though. Is you know, honestly, what it is, especially in a competition setting like this, when you're trying to, you know, do the damn thing. It's you know, it's a little bit of a. I I, I try to be a, as much of a calming presence as possible, but just, <laughs> there's, there's no denying that it like adds some X factor when you got some guy with a camera in your face and. Yeah, I really no. do appreciate it. Um, now here, man, you're just pulling down the. Are, is this black for the outlines? Yeah. So uh, I used to use uh, Cobalt Five. A lot of people use Cobalt Six, and uh, but I, I um, started using uh, Jet Black because when I would back it in white, any Cobalt I was using just was looking a little uh, bluish uh, to me when it was pulled down really, really thin. Okay. And, um, as I just did there, I was just pulling those as long as I could possibly pull using my big, big flame, getting as much glass as I could hot. And then I broke them into little uh, spaghetti-sized pieces. And um, uh, But yeah, I was using jet black. Okay, gotcha. Very good. Do you have any other color preferences for these? Like right now, I know for me, the North Star CADs are definitely kind of the denser. Uh, yeah, um, I basically use all cadmiums or or rather just like all opaque but i use a lot of cadmium colors uh for my flips uh and i mainly uh do red um like red orange yellow type fades i'll do uh just spectrum fades um i use i used to use a lot of like red crayon orange crayon yellow crayon but uh now i've started using things like poppy for red uh, I've used canary a lot for yellow, um, but I'll use uh, whatever I can get my hands on. Uh, if I can get, you know, just yellow crayon and stuff like that, uh, I like that. But um, uh, canary has always worked. And then uh, lots of oranges, lava, orange crayon, and then, um, you know, a bunch of them. I don't use things like the new uh ones uh the neocads uh, yeah those are less uh, dense ketchup. yeah like ketchup 
Right. The, the light shines through it. It just looks really, really weird. Uh, and the sure. flip because it's such a tiny amount of glass. In a larger form, you can totally get away with it. Um, and it looks great. Uh, but uh, just a tiny amount of glass, you can see right through it sometimes. So I've stopped using like ketchup and stuff. Sure. And the, white, and the whites I use uh, um, Star White, I believe. And it's uh, just the one that doesn't turn yellow when you use it. Yeah, uh, that's Snow White. Snow, Snow White, White exactly. goes all yellow, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so mix Star White and Snow White up. And sometimes I'll be like, people will be like, what would you make that whole sculpture out of? And I'll be like, Snow White. And they're like, holy shit. And I'm like, ah, no, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Star White, Star White. I, I messed up. Yeah. No, but no, I use a lot of Star White. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Kurt B was doing his demo at uh, Glass Vegas, and I was asking him about that, and he was like, "No, it's all Snow White," and I was just like, "Wow!" He was like, "Yeah," I, I, I think we, we were just kind of joking about how there's easier whites out there, but he's like, he was like, "I've developed a relationship with with Snow." You know? <laughs> <laughs> I can see that. No, I, I yeah. bought I bought a I bought a bit of it kind of on accident, and for a while I had to build that relationship. It was an uncomfortable gotcha. relationship. <laughs> for a little while. Sure. <laughs> Word. And now these are like going to be some guidelines. Is that right for like the top and bottom? Yeah. So um, you don't necessarily need these, but the, this is just how how I've I've done it. Um, where uh, I do this is the this is going to be the border of the whole pendant. So it's like the outer border line, and then this line um, isn't necessarily needed either, but because you could eye technically how long the lines have to be the lines all just have to match up but i like to use these lines so this line is going to be torn away later on because that's the that's the termination point of the pendant gotcha, so the yeah, first sure. line is going to be the border of the whole pendant okay so, so that that will uh help me out no know, knowing that i'm i'm staying where i need to be uh, as far as keeping to the the cylindrical shape and the size and everything and keeping the lines in order um, and then, so now I do the first line and, um, uh, and then I, I, do a series of four. So I start with the first and then I go on the other side and then I'll go in between those. Um, and as I pull away from the camera, what I did is I, I looked, uh, I looked at it, um, long ways, like you're looking down the barrel of the gun, uh, and to see if I did it right, basically. Um, and then when they look right, I'll try to aim for the center. And sometimes I think I did it there as I did a little dot first and I'll do it more because I do a little tiny dot on that black line that I know is going to be torn away. Mm -hmm. uh, some other artists will use a tungsten pick or something to make a mark, but uh, I do it with a little tiny dot because I know that part's going to be torn away anyway. And when I do that dot, I look down the barrel of the gun again and make sure that it looks right before I actually draw down the full line and make sure I'm in the right place. So nice. then I do the first four. And then I did, uh, I think I just did uh, the fifth, which is in between the next one. Uh, and now I just basically go in between those four to make eight. Okay. And uh, I start breaking it down. I do uh, even numbers. So four, eight, 16, 32. And, but you can do odd numbers as well if you, if you do that. But I, I find that a little harder to do sometimes looking down the barrel of the gun trying to make sure that I got a triangle there rather than a square. I just sure. find that the square is a little easier on me. Um, or maybe I just, I prefer it rather. So that's what yeah, I, no, I, I can uh, see that. I'll aim with that. Uh, and then in between every, you know, now I've gotten faster. I'm in competition right now. So I'm yeah. going real fast. So I did like I think five or six lines there. Um, but my rule is normally about four lines or so. You want to do a couple lines, then you want to reheat it. And what I did was I just reheated the whole thing with my major flame. Possibly want to give it a little bit more time than I did. But uh, again, in competition, I'm moving fast and I'm having faith in the glass and not going to blow up. And from, my, from, <laughs> from my memory, which I don't completely remember, but from my memory, I believe this one did crack <laughs> but because I was moving so fast. But um, Luckily, what happens is it cracks underneath the bottom line, so it actually doesn't affect the pendant at all. Uh, it just tends to be really cold underneath everything that I'm working. So very commonly, the, the worst case scenario is that it breaks right underneath that line. So, um, But that's just, all. I mean, not the worst case scenario. Bad things can happen, but that's most often what happens. 
Yeah. And now uh, what I did here, I, I finished off all the lines. I did uh, I did 32 lines. No, uh, yeah, 32 lines there. So I did the 4, 8, 16, 32 lines. And then I heat, I'm heating it evenly back and forth to get a nice uh, even heat base there and uh, give it a little twist with my right hand to twist it up. Um, when you were a big back on the Marvel, yeah, were you giving it a little air? I was giving a little air there. Okay. Um, a lot of the time I'll, I'll give a, I try not to overdo it with this. Cause a lot of the time you can, you can thin thin you can thin parts of it or thicken part parts of it. If you have that heat base just even slightly off and you, uh, over puff or something, you'll, yeah. uh, so you'll mess up the lines pretty quick. So um, I'm, if I'm puffing, it's very lightly, and I try to puff before I hit the marver, but sometimes I'll, I'll work to get, you know, want, you know, uh, simultaneously for sure. But it's very minimal work when I'm doing that. Um, okay. Stress that because I mess up things all the time doing that. And you but, guys had uh, like, working slow. With that. You guys had like three hours for the competitions. Was that right, or is it two and a half? This competition was two hours. The other competition two. was three. Wow. We, we eat, there's five competitions total, but I got to compete in two different competitions uh, within the time frame of the event. We, but I chose to do them in the same day, but uh, we could do them in separate days. So this is a two-hour event. And so my plan was I was going to bust out this filicello in one hour and then give myself the other hour to finish the piece. And if the filicello took a little bit longer than I anticipated, I just have to do the piece a little faster than I thought. All right. And now you're doing and, these lines uh, straight as well. Are they going to get twisted again here? Is that? Yes. So now what I just did there, um, I just connected each line. So instead of doing the one line on one side and one line on the other side, and then the other lines in between, I actually have to go from one line to the line right next to it, to the line right next to it and go all the way around. Hmm. Because what I do is I connect uh, I connect the dots, if you will, but I connect the lines. So each line, wherever it begins and ends, I have to connect the next line to the corresponding beginning and ending of the next set of lines. So, and if I miss one and I accidentally connect the beginning one over and then connect the other one correctly, it destroys the entire pattern of the piece. So you have to make sure that you connect those lines one by one, starting from one point all the way around uh, and make sure you don't miss one. Uh, and then what I did with the tungsten when we began talking was I just, uh, I flattened down where I begin and end my lines because a lot of the time those are the few, time, few pieces that tend to like not be fully fused down and like to pop off when you heat it up. So I like to stick those down real nice with the tungsten before I give it the nice heat that I am now. Sorry, I'm trying to speak as fast as the video is going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, I was like, all it right, feels well, like we're in competition mode. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, and, you know, the, the, this is some of the stuff like you don't need to watch a line get done, you know, 32 times or whatever. So there was a bit of editing to kind of keep, you know, stay ahead of. But, not totally, not totally. Yeah, no, but man, it's incredible how fast you, you got this done and how, how great it looked. You know, man, this is. It, yeah, yeah, it's really. Thank I, you. I almost wanted to give it a different name, like like the speed of cello or something like that. You know, <laughs> it's just so fucking fast. What I uh, what I just did there is uh, a line that I drew. Even though I flattened down the tips of the lines, there was one part in the middle of all those lines that uh, was not fully fused down, and it actually separated and popped. So mm -hmm. I used a little piece of glass there to finish out the line. And then I went back to what I was doing, but I had to allow it to cool down just enough to be straight and then fix that up. That's what I just did there. Gotcha. And now I'm uh, finishing out the twist. So what I'm doing now is I, I heat it up again, uh, the same way I did the first time and I twist the other direction. Okay. Um, this, is, this is much different than you would see uh, Yushin do it on YouTube. Yushin and Revere did a video as well. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, He's probably like a filicello and, uh, um, this is much different than his. He, they, he draws his lines diagonal, uh, but mine are, are more spun. So um, you can say it's much more of like a filled reticello, as as I believe the reticello, the classic reticello, is uh, heating up and spinning the lines. Um, 
if sure. you will. So that's how, all, and this leaves you with fully melted down lines before you actually start filling it in, uh, which is a little bit different. Nice. Yeah. There's some, there's some sticklers out there about all those terms, especially some of them are like, no, you can't call it a reticillo if it doesn't have the air traps, you know, and yeah, all this. Exactly. And, like, and I was well. going to mention that. And that's why, yeah, I didn't go fully, <laughs> I wasn't going to go fully into it, but uh, at least one part, one aspect of the reticello is the, the spun lines, if you will. Sure. Yeah, no, totally. No. Jason in chat's asking, how do you know when you've turned back to the right spot? Good question. Um, so what I'm doing there, I, I'm, I'm picking it up and looking at it vertical. I look, I see it better vertical. Some people see it better horizontal, but I'm actually looking for the lines to cross each other and, and <laughs> my head tilted there. Like, I, I'm, <laughs> um, but, uh, I'm looking at it to, um, see that it looks like a, a perfect X, uh, and, uh, depending upon how twisted the lines began the first time uh, is how flat the, uh, s the square or diamond will be. So I call them diamonds because they end up more diamond shapes rather than squares. But if the lines aren't twisted that much, your crossing will look more like a square. But um, uh, if they're crossed a lot more, it'll look more uh, diamond shaped long ways. But regardless, uh, no matter what, I'm pulling more. <laughs> yeah, you're pulling more off the I'm end of the blank. Yeah, so you got a nice happen. trick there, but for like uh, put no, a little showmanship on it there. <laughs> I don't know what, why am I, I don't know what I'm using. Oh, I'm doing a, a borderline. I needed a thicker stringer for a borderline. That's okay. what I'm doing. Gotcha. So I'm going to put a border on this guy. Now that I finished it, I'm going to put a nice thick black border because I know that I'm going to connect it to a big section of tubing. And, I, and it, since I'm in competition, I just don't even want to leave anything to chance as far as like a, a bad connection. <laughs> so I'm like, I don't want the tiny, tiny little line there. I'm just going to have this nice, thick black border. So I have less chance of fucking up. <laughs> That's, okay. That gotcha. was the general line behind that as far as the competition. Oh, and actually, you know what? I didn't even do that. Oh, that right. was look at that. I'm okay. just filling in my. Okay. So instead of that, that is a different trick. Yeah, we'll edit that, that out that in post. I, I released that little trick. Here's, here's instead. Here's a different trick that I actually use for competition. A lot of the time, I'll use uh, unobtainium, or uh, maybe steel wool, or uh, like something sparkly for these lines, these darker lines. But this time, I'm using uh, jet black because I don't want to take any chances of it cracking. So that's yeah, a different yeah. little competition trick that I was using there. But um, what I'm doing here. Um, uh, let me get back to whatever I was saying. If I, I just cut myself off, yeah, yeah. what I'm doing, <laughs> it, what I'm doing here is um, uh, I break my filicello pattern up. So I have sixty, I have sixty four lines total that cross each other. So I break my filicello pattern up into blocks of seven by seven squares that I fill in with color, and it makes it easier for me to just. Uh, it, it makes it easier for me to fill it in faster, honestly, instead of having to just like think about it every little layer, go up and be like, okay, well, I'm going to do a little triangle here and here and mathematically break down each one. So I break it down by seven by seven blocks, drawing these lines. Um, so every time, so I just started off, draw first line, fill in the big block all the way up. And what I'm doing is following the original line that I have there. Um, fo I'm following the black line that I drew at that angle. And then I count uh, eight blocks, and then on the eighth block, I draw all the way up those blocks. And then I, uh, and then I uh, do it again the other direction, or, um, uh, and I keep going. I basically go all the way around, breaking down those seven by seven blocks, and uh, draw, basically I'm drawing a reticello within the filicello. And uh, those create the co contrasting darker lines within my filicello. And you'll actually see that in my logo. I have a logo uh, that's a filicello. And uh, it, it, ha it breaks, the, the filicello is broken down into another reticello, the same way I'm doing here, except the pattern is a 32 line filicello rather than a 64 line filicello, which is what I began with making was 32 line ones. And these are the higher count ones. I heard you... Oh, go ahead. Sorry, just I'll finish it with when there is 32 lines rather than 64 lines, I break the pattern up into three by three blocks rather than seven by seven because it's just the easier mathematical 
thing to do with it. All and right. It, now, I was getting high while you were saying all that. Could you repeat that again? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just playing. I'm just playing. No, no. no, yeah, I had to click over the Instagram to take a look at the finished piece again to see where these lines were going. And speaking of that, that, uh, that pattern that you're using, I heard that you um, you knocked off some China company to, to like um, yeah that logo man that I, got, I, yeah. I I first saw your logo on a bong in the shop for like fourteen ninety five. <laughs> No, just <laughs> but yo, okay. So for those who don't know, man, th there's like a, you may, Dakota. You should be the one to really tell the story. But it begins with the fact that the China has been knocking off your designs and making them into bacon labels. Is that right? Um. Well, I will say. <clears throat> well, I'll start by saying that the Filicello design that I have right here. Uh, if you can see it on camera. No, oh, yeah, this, never mind. I'm not yeah, on camera. Exactly. Mind. Yeah. Sorry. We'll later, but yeah. Uh, <laughs> you can see it on my Instagram. It's my biopic, um, but uh, profile pic, whatever. But it's um, my that is the one that I'm referring to that wasn't ever used by China or rather import an import company, which uh, is dispersed in uh, Los Angeles, as far as I know, to my understanding. Um, but it's um, in what they call the Bong District. <laughs> <laughs> There's a bong district. The bong district. Uh, there is an entire district of wholesale company bong, bong wholesale companies that are all on one district, and they call it the bong district. That I this came to me in research after I found out about the the company. <laughs> um, so uh, before I go on about the import thing, I'll just say quickly what I'm doing here is I'm filling in my first color. Now that I filled in the black, I have the, I have the seven by seven block. I'm starting with the bottom section, which is not a block; it's a triangle. So, I, but I fill it in the same way. Um, I start the first section of lines. Uh, basically, I fill it in uh, like block by like block, line block by line block, the same way that I kind of did with uh, the black lines. And I fill it in um, red, orange, yellow. And uh, I'm just filling in red here. And then I do the next one and I go all the way around. And when I go all the way around like that, um, it kind of keeps the whole thing kind of warm too, which is nice. So I'm not staying in one area keeps it warm 360 degrees and uh i'm moving quickly here so normally i don't always do this but i'm actually doing the bottom and the top section or i finished the bottom section and now i'm going on the top section but um I'm simultaneously or maybe doing the top section the same uh after but now i'm moving on to the red on the top before i move on to the orange but no matter what i'm going red orange yellow and I fill in the blocks for the red, orange, yellow. And that's what I'm currently doing. But the import thing, that wasn't uh, the logo that I actually use right now. Um, it was a, uh, actually, you know what? I have it right here. Hold on. <laughs> I'm picturing Dakota like in like the stakeout so, car, you know, like with the fedora. So, oh, wait. Uh, actually, I'm not on video. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, I yeah. We, we'll, we can share it later or we'll we can pause later. this and we'll share it later. I apologize. I, sh I just, I'm, I, I'm out. Of, uh, so um, I, uh, it was not my logo that was on my, um, that I use now. Yeah. Uh, it was actually a picture taken of a pendant and the uh, pendant that I made um uh, it, it, I found it incredibly funny that like, cause I always thought like, I don't make anything special, like a recycler or something like that, or something that's unique, even like, uh, something, something unique. I don't, I don't make like a functional piece that's unique really, uh, in my mind when this was going on or in the past. And I didn't think like, basically I just thought China's never going to rip me off. Like they're going to rip the famous <laughs> people off. Yeah, right, they're, right, yeah. they're never even going to find a way to rip me off. Even if they figured out a way to rip me off or whatever I do off, it, they wouldn't because they rip off, you know, some famous person. You know, it's like sure, yeah. Uh, but basically, the reason I found it was so funny was that they took a picture of something and then turned it into a sticker, and that was a new one. Other than I've seen literally uh, the MGW. Uh, prints where they made MGW bongs and they made fake lion sticker things and they stuck fake lion faces on on bongs and oh, wow. you know there were there were fake MGW imports. Hmm. So uh, with this piece, I'm doing a switching back to the video. Yeah, I'm yeah. doing ra rainbow, so I made it to green now, and now I'm making it over to blue because I did those uh, those green lines. But uh, and but uh, basically, they took a picture of this thing um this piece that i made and i made a lot of the similar ones 
that were, you know, that, that color scheme and not the color scheme, but that, that specific pattern, but you can actually see in the picture that they took the exact imperfections that my piece is, you know, has rather. Um, and there's actually one of the lines in the, in the, the image that they printed is not finished and it doesn't actually connect all the way. Um, and, it, and it's because uh, there, it's because there's an air bubble in my piece. Okay. <laughs> and <laughs> so they it, translated that. As it, it translates. The yeah. <laughs> it, it, it translates. They edited it. They edited it with a computer and they, um, you know, cut it out and they had to do some editing and stuff. But I think just like, you know, and, and for all I know, I could be wrong, but I, I mean, as far as I can see, it's very obvious what's going on. Um, but, uh, and then simultaneously, you know, my first thought obviously was, wow, why wouldn't they just make a digital image of their own? Like, it's right. a very, very simple thing that I'm kind of making. Sure. And then, and then I see that they did. They did make a, a, a digital image and they didn't just make the di digital image of what I did and then color it in. They actually made an exact replicate of a very similar pendant that I made that I posted along with the pendant that they took a picture of hmm. and then, and it, it was it was quite funny what this what this company did um, but I knew full full and well it's not taking from my pocket and it, it was just uh, it, it was hilarious and crazy and um, it came at a time where I really like kind of needed a distraction uh um that's feel really good to be so inspirational and uh yeah i don't i don't know i mean i don't know about any of that but i it and i don't i mean and as, and assumably i would you know like assumably they did it because it's like they thought that I, they could get away with it which they could and they more you know and and they wouldn't copy somebody like uh you know um just giving somebody some people shout shout outs uh john w wjc yushin Sure. You know, some of, the, some of the guys that, you know, let's say I was in their position and had the intent of copying somebody I felt I could get, make money off of, uh, I would copy them, you know. So right, right. Uh, anyway, so I don't want to go on and on about that. What I'm doing uh, um, right here is I, I just finished filling in my section and I actually just blew up all the glass behind the original uh, borderline that I, I began the piece with. So wherever that borderline is, I'm just trying not to heat that up too much. I'm letting a little bit of the heat get there to stretch it out just a little bit, but I don't want to manipulate the, the pattern I just drew. I just want it to stretch out a little bit, um, you know, flare out just a little bit, but I want to make a, a nice big um, uh, doorknob right there, a nice uh, spheroid, if you will. And uh, what I, I used my marvering pad to make sure that I get that, that back end um, nice and perfect, nice and tapered rather than sometimes you'll get a little lumpy or uh, or maybe uh, flatter than you want or something like that. I just get it right where I want it. And it also actually helps because I can, it cools it down a little bit. Um, it, when you touch to the marver pad, that back end will cool down. And then the part that will expand and you want to expand is that, that middle part um, to, to get a little wider. So that that's also why I'm using the marver pad. So yeah, then I go sure. in and I, I heat up the top of the pattern section um uh and <laughs> i'm talking to uh maddie white's son yeah it's kyle <laughs> yeah. oh yeah, yeah. uh he came out. up to me and said hi in vegas and i didn't recognize him at first and i'm like you cut your hair oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah no it's so um uh so there we go i'm cutting so i'm heating up the top of the top of that section and uh and i'm using the marble pad as kind of like a um an uh, L Marver, that's what people call it. No, not an L Marver. It is an L Marver. As a, uh, what's the little V? The V V Marver. The like necking tool. V neck, the necking tool. It's a necking tool. I don't have one, so I don't. Um, but I use it as a necking tool. So I was using the Marver as a necking tool. I disconnected it, and then I just squished it right onto the front because, like I said, I was going to tear off all that black glass and all of that. I am not being super careful with the termination point yet because I know I have so much glass to take away. So I used a totally round section to get a nice circular connection to it. So I'd pull away the sides evenly and take yeah. away a lot of glass simultaneously. But now I'm being a little bit more 
strict with my termination point because it tore away a lot of the glass I wanted to. So I get a little tiny point and pull away. And I was gonna, I was being so gentle it, it released itself, but that's okay. I got the point to where I wanted it. And I do it again, pulling that point where I want it. A lot of people would not do what I do, pulling the stringers. A lot of people roll it, do a lot of other tricks to avoid stringers at all costs. Um, I am a fan of stringers, as you can see. Um, so, you know, I, and I always tell people, I've, I taught for a couple of years, I've always told people just to do what makes them feel the most comfortable. Because if, you know, you can achieve what you're going for, you, uh, you did it well. Um, same thing as when I was learning how to skateboard as a kid. I was like, is that a trick? I'd, you know, I'd do something and they'd be like, did you land on the board? <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Did you do it, <laughs> man? You did it. You know? it's, uh, but a lot of people will avoid stringers for, uh, you know, uh, health reasons or being safety, safety reasons, if you will. Um, sure. But, you know, be careful. Keep your bent, you know, just be careful and do, do what you got to do. Uh, I like stringers, as I said. So now that I got my termination point, getting that all nice and hot and, um, uh, I'm puffing into it a little bit. I like to say the the puff is a little bit like the like a heartbeat, just like puff puff. Wait a second, puff puff. Wait a second, puff puff. Wait a second. Um, and uh, but I I'm trying to retain the wall thickness uh, while I'm I'm melting it down. I don't want it to implode. As as uh, sometimes if, if you're imploding glass, you want it to get nice and thick and stuff. But I don't want it to implode at all. I want it to for the most part retain wall thickness. And until at least it, it gains, a, 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 it becomes a flat section. Um, and then from there, I can kind of dictate how much I want it to implode, but you really don't want it to implode at all at uh, being a, a, a disc flip um, at, uh, like that. But uh, I will sometimes, if I'm aiming for a flip that's a specific size, I will allow it to implode ever so slightly just to get to the size that I want. You do have a little bit of play. Um, with it, you know, because right now it's it's totally fine, acceptable section, but with a little bit more more heat, it's gonna it's gonna start um, getting those lines to come together a little bit more and be. Uh, uh, and what I sorry to back up, um, but uh, what happened there is it just flipped inside out uh, or or flat. Uh, once it got enough heat, uh, and I kept the the wall thickness uh, uh, nice and even with enough heat and gravity, flipped itself over as long as my uh, blow tube was based towards the ground. And then that would be the, the finished product there. Um, but uh, with uh, when you're melting it down and you thicken it or uh, implode it a little bit, it will get those lines, um, you know, uh, a little more um, bunched up or, or, or you'll get the detail you're looking for, really. Uh, and then once you pass that, it's going to start imploding and start coming forth through the black lines you drew and, all the colors going to start coming forward. The black lines, you're going to see all of the little um, nooks and crannies of your drawing more and more and more. So you find that sweet spot and you do have a little bit of play uh, uh, as far as when you're uh, doing that final meltdown. Um, but you want to make sure that it, you know, isn't too thin or um, you don't blow it out too much or you don't thicken it too much. But uh, you want to retain the wall thickness. So. Very good. Um, Very good. We got some homies rolling in um right yeah. now because we usually start around this time and if if you didn't see I, I posted on the glass central instagram and in the torch talk group but right now the the concept for the show is torch talk it's not torch talk okay no it's, but it's like woodstock basically is the thing here and i, I want the show to be a bit more like an in-person event we're starting a bit earlier and we're going to go a bit later with games prizes it's gonna be a lot of fun and I, I just want to do kind of an extended version of the show that is what i'd wanted to do if we were able to get together in person but not to take away from the demo i just wanted to bring a whole bunch of people who got here in the last five minutes up to speed um and you're you're condensing this 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 getting this prepping this tube of the dichro is is what's happening here is it being twisted um, what i'm twisting it yes. okay so I'm gotcha getting it very hot um i'm uh using my major flame uh just going as fast as i can because competition so i'm just getting it really really hot risking burning out that dichro okay but, uh, i'm just getting it nice and hot spinning it up as much as i can and uh <laughs> Gotcha. Yeah, and uh, getting it going. So it's, it's nice and hot. And uh, I don't remember which piece this is. This might be the mouthpiece because it looks like I'm uh, blowing it up uh, 
quite wide. So it looks like I'm spinning it up, getting it pretty wide. Um, it looks like my punty is not straight, so maybe I'm straightening that out, or maybe I got my punty a little too hard. Maybe I'm taking it off. No, I'm done taking it off. And uh, so I took my punty off there and uh, I spun it up. So maybe that is going to be the section I turn into the functional piece. Maybe. Do you remember what piece. color dichro that is? Uh, Shane in chat was wondering. Yep, it's um, dichro alchemy's uh, rainbow. Dichro over cobalt. Cool, thanks. Nice. I'm always tend to just make stuff up when people ask questions like that, you know? Not right. Yeah. That's Rainbow Road. It's Rainbow Road. Yeah. Rainbow Road. Uh, also, when Dang you know, as, as you're as you're chatting, and if you run into a blank spot and you're trying to think about what to say, uh, Lee Spence earlier wanted to know where do you come up with your ideas and what inspires you? You know, little question. So will you ask that again? Um, where do you come up with your ideas and what inspires you? I mean, just as you're talking, you don't have to like tell us uh, right now, but you know. Um, okay. I mean, uh, sorry. I thought the question originally was like, what do <laughs> I thought the question was when you're talking to a person and don't know what to say, how do oh, you come right. up with something to say? You know, that that's good like, advice. That's, that's good advice question. too. <laughs> if you want to answer that no, question, yeah, that's okay. how do I come up with inspiration for glass <laughs> when I don't really know what to make? Um, so uh, before I answer that, um, I, what I'm doing here is I see uh, this was for the, the mouthpiece. Yep. So I'm getting this dichro section hot. Um, I do do this in two different ways. This way I did it this way um but i i uh i got it blown up to the size of the section i was connecting it to and now i'm getting the surface of both of them really hot and trying to uh, match the temperature between them and get them malleable or oh okay. looks like I'm moving. oh yeah You're and then still um, with us still um, with us we're I'm good getting i'm getting them molten uh before i connect them together uh and because the because the round section, the spheroid section is round, the tip of it, the, the first point of it should connect first. And then I'll blow into it a little bit, as you can see, until it expands out to the end. And that should uh, relieve any possibility of air bubbles for the most part. Um, you might get, you know, some tiny little something or other, but uh, it should, just because it's the, that backing is all the, the melted down color and everything. But uh, you, you should be able to, and then, um, so now once that's connected, it blows out to the edge of my, my section. I'm now evening out the wall thickness behind it because one, I puffed into it before to blow it onto that section, but also two, I wanna just make sure that it's nice and even and, and ready for me to work after I disconnect the other side and uh, wanna even it out, even out the wall thickness to the um, section I just connected to it. because that that front's gonna be double thick. So, and I'm making sure that it's nice and straight. I don't know why I'm switching hands, but oh, there we go. I'm switching hands because I like the heavy thing in my left hand. Yeah, so yeah. hands and uh, now I'm connecting to the back end didn't feel totally straight. So now I'm straightening out the back end, heating up the blow tube. Um, so now I'm gonna disconnect, uh, I'm gonna get ahead of myself and I'm gonna disconnect this clear and then I'm gonna cut off the edge of the clear and then I'm gonna clean that up and then I'm gonna retain the, the spheroid shape. And then I'm gonna start working it into a mouthpiece. Um, but how I um, come up with inspiration, uh, that is a very, very difficult question. I think one that we all ask ourselves, uh, no matter who you are. And even if you find some sort of answer to it one day, it's not gonna be the answer for it the next day. But... Uh, Do you remember your inspiration for this piece? Like, what made you think to do this one for competition? Um, what was the, what was the... Um, yeah, what was the theme? I think it was a matter yeah, of yeah, fitting a sick-ass filicello into the theme of the this, competition, this, right? You know what I mean? Sometimes the yeah. math is a little more straightforward. Okay, so this thing was uh, high and dry. Um, my thought behind it was uh, high and dry was make the sickest dry piece that you can. So I just used shears to cut off the clear glass after I blew into it and popped it open. Uh, and I used shears, cut that off, and I'm cleaning it up. Um, 
My, it was high and dry. It was basically make the coolest dry pipe that you can. And um, my idea was, one, maybe I can impress the judges. Maybe they'll understand that and, uh, and be impressed by the fact that I did the filicello in an hour. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'm not sure if anybody else is going to be bringing that because nobody in that competition had the ability to bring prep like that. So I was like, I don't know, maybe if I push myself that way, that's a way of impressing the judges. And then I just went with the Dicro because it was, you know, really pretty and it did well the year before it, I, I think, um, in a different competition. Uh, and I just, it's honest, it's honestly one of my favorite things to ever work. And uh, some of my favorite pieces I've ever made were all made with it. And uh, um, the ins- and uh, basically that was it. This was the mi- more minor competition. So I gave it less thought, but considering the, the it was, uh, pretty straightforward um, uh, uh, competition in general, like make the coolest dry pipe. Mm-hmm. So um, that was kind of more or less my thought behind it. My other competition that I did, uh, the Praying Mantis, I gave a little bit more thought because it was, uh, um, uh, or, you know, I would say maybe artsy emotional thought uh, rather than uh, um, just trying to win a competition thought. Um, but I, I gave it a, uh, cause it was, um, prey versus predator, predator versus prey. Okay. And a praying mantis was like, it's prey. It's just an insect, but it's like the baddest predator in that, uh, in that world. Yeah. So yeah. Kind of a little bit of both. Be careful and, handling um, praying mantises. <laughs> and, and again, I was going along with, uh, the year, the year before my aunt did very well. Um, oh, yeah, I, did, yeah. uh, I got a, I was very pleased with it. It's also something that I practiced. It's something that I'm one of my first aunts, my first aunt, I never really, I made other bees and stuff later on, but I, I made an aunt and that's in Switzerland. Uh, some people uh, yeah. actually bought that in Switzerland and that was made awesome. for a couple of years prior. And that was also always a very special piece to me. So um, that whole uh, general style of piece rig that i've been making it's always been kind of special to me in, in, in some sort of way it's been something i've made a long time or changed and and played around with a lot so um so yeah this was this competition was much more like well i have two hours i guess the general idea is like i'm gonna see you know i'm gonna push myself in the detail of two hours you know and, and uh honestly if i could go back i probably would have made a sherlock i think it would have been prettier I've, I've okay. given it a lot of thought. I've had, all, I think it's been like a, oh. year, a year and some change. I think I would have taken the same material, same idea, and I would have made a Sherlock. Well, I can see why you might have gone for a Redditello for the high and dry, you know, like. Yeah. You get high, you got something to look out and zone out on. Yeah, that's, that makes sense, right? Yep, yep. Right? No, it's, I, uh... Meditate on. I thought it was funny you mentioned Sweden, man, because that technique, maybe we talked about this at, in Atlantic City, but that technique where you back the, the design uh, with another bubble that way is really similar to a hot glass technique called the Swedish overlay. And that's a technique where they, yeah, they take one bubble and basically blow it into another, you know, that's prepared just the same way, man. They connect that tip, you know, and, boop, 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 and that's how they overlay that one color over another. And yeah, if you Google it or whatever, you can see a footage of guys doing it with like, you know, huge bubbles in the hot shop or whatever and, you know, making these layered pieces. Yeah, I know of a, a blow-in, which will cause, you know, much more like uh, air trap stuff and like is a little bit different. And then uh, sure, puffing stuff, which is a little bit different, but pretty similar. You know, you're just connecting yeah, yeah. the combo into the back and, you know, stuff like that. So that's really cool. I didn't know that. Yeah, no, no. The Swedish overlay is much more like the face of the bubbles being put together as opposed to any of those, you know, blowing into a, a tube or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, I'll uh, I'll give credit where credit's deserved. Uh, Charlie Reynolds Glass. Uh, we okay. did a collab, collab um, maybe four years ago or something like that. Maybe even five, four years ago. Um, but uh, he used to do a lot of implosion uh, fume work, gold and silver implosion fume work. And he'd do these really cool implosion pendants and i did a filicello and we backed his implosion pendant with my filicello and uh, he kind of showed me that technique because he used to back his implosion pendants with uh 
crushed opal or a space tech tubing using that method. Oh, nice. So, so through him, I, I, I learned that method. Hell yeah. And, um, actually, and what you just saw me do there, uh, I popped a hole in the, I actually just did a little one minute tutorial on this on my Instagram. Follow me on Instagram, Dakota Damadrona. Mm-hmm. Uh, I just did a, a tutorial on this. Uh, also follow hashtag Dakota Madrona tutorials. And, uh, but um, I, I connected a punty to one side, um, the, the front of it, and then cut off the back, melted it down, made sure that it was flat, made sure that it was a disc. Um, and because you can't have a closed section of glass, before all that, I popped a little hole into the side of it. So I took that, I took that disc, popped a hole in the side of it, um, connected it to a punty, closed the back end, simultaneously twisting the die curve, as you can see in the video there, now that it's cooled down, uh, and then uh, terminated it, melted it down flat, leaving me with that, that disc. And then I connected what I just did when I started talking, I connected the blow tube to the hole that I originally popped um, to leave air uh, uh, to get into the section. Because if you close glass completely, um, which a lot of your viewers obviously know by anybody that doesn't, uh, uh, you can't close glass completely, so you have to leave that open there. So I had that left open. Uh, I popped the hole where I knew I wanted my mouthpiece. Uh, so uh, where I knew I wanted my mouthpiece, pop that hole, connected up that blow tube, and now I can connect right to the section t- to complete my piece. Um, I might connect a blow tube to the other side and reconnect it to fix my blow tube, but I, I looks like I got that in one seal and I'm just leaving it. Um, but in a lot of scenarios, I'd probably get that seal and then yeah. clean up clean up the seal a little bit. But I may have grabbed it. I think, now, you, post- uh, I think you posted this on YouTube. Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> we have, we have a, a mat to give away from Acadian Glass later to use to, to wipe your glass down. But as you can see, it's clearly not necessary if you're a badass. Yeah, yeah, Dakota just wipes that off with his hands. I got footage of that this year again, too. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever that camera come out. Yep, yeah, yep. I, <laughs> I'm just yeah, I, don't, uh, I mean, when, you, when you're in a competition and, and you know, the mat's not around or whatever, you gotta get that, you get that shit off and get back to work, you know? <laughs> Yeah, I don't have a, a Kevlar glove or any, you know, or whatever anybody anybody uses. I'm not sure, but uh, a lot of people have different different ones, uh, and they've people have made comments before about it. Oh, but, sure. Uh, no, if you're quick enough, you know, you got those oils in your fingers. A lot of people will be like that. Don't do that to your glass because you got the oils in your fingers. But in comparison to the rest of the stuff that's around, and you know, I'm avoiding getting on my glass, and and always have to avoid the oils in my fingers. Don't seem to pop up too much you know you, they burn away um i've never seen anything really leave anything residual um unless i have like really gross hands which you know it's i can't even imagine doing it unless like you get plastic hair i get hair on my glass that's probably i'm avoiding all the time I'm, i put glass in my hair all the time and it just gets it you know burns everywhere a lot of glass blowers might know what that's like what it looks like and yeah, yeah. But, uh, but no, I um, yeah, I just wipe it off, and uh, um, a lot of the time I will though use I use newspaper. Uh, uh, that's my go-to as I keep newspaper around. But in in these scenarios, they don't have newspaper around. I always forget to put it in my box, and um, so uh, even in my studio, I'm so lazy about it. I haven't figured that out, and I actually have a like a Dunkin' Donuts napkin sitting next to my station that I sometimes use. <laughs> And, uh, but now I've, uh, sometimes I'll wipe bigger stuff off with, uh, an actual glove. I use a, one of those, um, as you've seen on TV, kitchen gloves that last up to <laughs> 500 degrees or something. So yeah, I got yeah. one of those and I'll wipe stuff off with that. It seems to be able to do the same job as some of the, like my, uh, I've got some Kevlar clamps or something. I think they're Kevlar or whatever they are, but, yeah. um, Yeah. But uh, it works. Works when you're in a pinch. I'm sure. telling you, to go to Dakota, no Corona Madrona. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was a playoff of the my suggestion, which is Dakota, clean hands, Madrona. Yes, yes. <laughs> Sounds like, like a cool like, gangster nickname or whatever, you know? Like, oh, yeah, that's, that's coming up with the clean hands. It's a way to keep your hands clean. 
they're that hot, and I'm not, I can't imagine uh, Corona yeah. not survive. Survive that shit. Nope. <laughs> when you run out of hand sanitizer, we got to make a meme out of that. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. And use a picture of Tagoda, like wiping it, right? Like, I'll just make a video with the caption above it. All right. All right. Perfect. <laughs> Uh, what I did here uh, originally, I, I pulled a little bit in the center of this piece of sec, uh, piece of tubing, section of tubing I had there. I pulled it a little bit skinnier, and then on one side of it, I blew up a real big ball. Um, and I used my Marver pad to kind of keep it tapered and, and keep it a, a spheroidal shape. Uh, maybe a spheroidal might be right, but a spheroid, um, keeping it to that shape. And um, and then. Uh, I did the same thing on, on the front to blow up a slightly smaller ball. And this is kind of uh, mirroring, a, a, well, it's mirroring a classic hammer spoon because that's basically what I'm making, uh, mm. except with the uh, disc mouthpiece. So I'm uh, making a little hammer. And um, now I'm once I've made the top ball, I'm popping a hole that's going to connect to the uh, disc mouthpiece. And it looks like I already popped the hole and I'm reaming. <laughs> Yeah, yo, the homies wanted to know who made that reamer. Do you know or? Um, let me pick it up again. <laughs> all right, all right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's funny because I I was gonna ask that and then I was looking through chat and I was like, wait a minute, is this a joke or nope, was that a nope, serious nope, question? Nope, okay, uh, I'll <laughs> see. Uh, um, I would say uh, it, I think I'm gonna pick it up again when I do the uh, carb. So, but um, just to make sure, but I believe it's Griffin Glass Tools. Most of my tools are Griffin glass tools. I buy most of my tools on mountain glass. So uh, if you're looking for something that I use, it's normally on mountain glass. Uh, shout out to mountain glass. Yeah. Uh, and um, both sponsors. Uh, and also, and both Griffin Griffin tools. Shout out to Griffin tools because they're awesome. And um, but and uh, I'll buy uh, straight from Griffin uh, if I'm at trade shows and stuff like that. Hell yeah! Uh, Always nice and, to see Scott. Um, uh, and. Uh, trying to think i'm sure i'm forgetting something that i've scooped up but uh i mean i mean i use like a, a, a mccluse i think that's it mcclaus mccluse uh um marble mold just throwing that out there for oh cool. mike mike so, close mike close mike close <laughs> mccluse i know i was saying the last name but his last name is close i thought it was mccluse no, mike okay. close. That's like marble mold. My bad. <laughs> <It's all good. laughs> That's what I'm going to start calling him now, man. Oh, man, I got that McClue smolt. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, yeah, um, You're quartering the seal yeah, here, is that right? Just hitting it from each yeah, side? Yeah, yep, so I got the seal. I got it as best I could, but then I'm going around it. Um, I'm not using a uh, bridge, so it's just floating, and I'm... Uh, going around it um, north, south, east, west of the 360 degrees I have there. So if I'm getting, uh, if I'm hitting uh, north, south, west, east are all cool and uh, keep it straight. So I don't need a bridge. Um, and then as you can see there, I actually, I melt it and then I turn on my oxygen on my hand torch and I cool that part down with my oxygen so that I can move on faster. Um, Air bridge. Sometimes I do it just out of impatience and sometimes I'm doing it for competition here yeah yeah i think salt was telling me about that at melt he was like yo this is yeah, he, right he called there. it I'm air bridging there. or maybe it was you i don't remember all y'all ballers just tell me shit and i took it away yeah, I, wasn't, I wasn't at melt but why well, was it <laughs> but it could I'm have been going, anywhere homie and now yeah. i'm going in there and uh taking off the bottom there yeah we had uh recently with us cool hand sues and she had a saying that that uh, I'd like to like uh, turn into a uh, sticker, even maybe. She said, uh, "Bridges are for bitches." <laughs> so <I thought> she, <laughs> she, <laughs> she would like your. Uh, I like that. Your approach there, <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Now we're cooking an opal yeah. down here. Is that right? Uh, yes. So as you can see, I, I pulled the opal out of the bag with uh, pliers. I was, you know, tell students, and I'm sure many of people watching already know you don't want to touch those opals with your fingers. Those oils, off of those. yeah, the oils I mentioned earlier that I'm not too afraid of, I don't like them on my. <laughs> yeah. So uh, you know, I, I'm gonna keep that out of the opals and keep them out of being encased within glass. Um, so uh, I melt that down, and um, uh, I'm going fast because it's competition. And actually, um, 
I did not use this for the piece. I encased it, got it ready, and then I actually asked your opinion. And I was like, you think this piece really, <gasps> Wait, really, what? really needs what? You it? cheated? Do you think this piece really needs no. it? Yeah, and, I was and like. you were like, okay. I don't know, man. It's a really sick piece. Yeah, and I was like, you're on the green. Right. It's, not, it's not worth <laughs> it. Just, just put it in. <laughs> it's not worth the risk. And I was like, you're right. Because that's, that's what I wanted to hear. I was like, I, I did, it's just not worth the risk. And what I did there is I, I stripped it. I yeah. guess the term people use. Yeah. So I stripped it down because I wasn't happy with it. Probably had some sort of air bubble. And I'm um, getting it going and connecting back up to the solid glass. Try to do this as fast as possible because I've had opals break on me from just uh, oh. being too slow after stripping it. Um, and uh, yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, I uh, got that all encased. Yeah, yeah, nice now, little just bonus footage. To be footage clear, though. I'm totally kidding about the whole cheating part because I picked up a piece of glass on the ground for punting this last time, and I'm pretty sure that was cheating too. So yeah, you gotta be careful with that. They're, you know, <laughs> like the people who run the glass games are very professional. Like the yeah. daddy especially can be a super stickler about certain things, and I've seen people get confused about how much time they had left and shit like that, and there's no fucking cutie fucking, okay, don't worry about it. It's like, I'm sorry, man, you fucked up. We cannot allow you to take home a prize, you know, this thing, and it's very upsetting, you know, because nobody's doing that on purpose, fucking around, but they people get confused and things happen, and you got to be on top of the rules at these things, man, and that that's how it should be, though. You want it to be run that way, you know, really tight. Yeah, no, I have extremely... I have more strict rules on myself than I believe the competition has. Word. I, uh, you know, in, in Vegas, uh, my the first time I was ever in Vegas, my piece actually cracked Oof. after, like it cracked in the middle of the day, oh, the day goodness. that we were presenting our pieces. Like oh, it, it man. wasn't, it was fine. It was totally fine. But it, and it was like in the morning, we get them at like 10 a.m. And by like, they were walking around by like, they were supposed to, there, um, I would say like 4.45, it cracked. And they were coming around for their final, final judging at, at 5. And they did the first judging already. And yeah. then after, and then they do a final judging without me present. And in between that time, it cracked. Oof. I had this big old crack through the front face of it. And I was, and like, so I, and what, and I was so embarrassed of it, I like turned it around and like walked away and went and talked to a friend about it and and like um as you know a lot of people would need i needed some comfort <laughs> went and talked to a friend about it and was like oh my god this thing broke and by the time i come, came back they had already judged and my piece wasn't facing forward so i wasn't 100 percent sure that they saw that it cracked <laughs> so i you know was upset i actually went and talked to dad and granny shout out to <laughs> and she was yeah. one of the judges I told her that my piece cracked and I was worried that perhaps, you know, I, I didn't want to, you know, seem, uh, I wouldn't want to toot my own horn or seem egotistical and think I won, you know, think I deserved to place or thought I won. But I was like, if by chance I placed in some sort of way, um, I want to make sure that I got the points I deserved. And I need you guys to know that it has a big fucking crack. And so we ran over to Maddie. I told Maddie and Dan Grant, like I said, so I, I play by the rules as best I can. That was just a nice little story. Play by the rules. I, I appreciate but, that. I'm, yeah. I'm a rule person. Yeah. But um, I appreciate that. But no, I, 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 I always like, you know, I, I overly text Maddie and I show him pictures of my prep. I'm like, are you sure this is okay? You know, like, <laughs> yeah. I know that like, it's like, I go under, you know, I, I make stuff there that I don't, didn't need to, you know, stuff like that. Like, don't fit stuff in the box that I should have. And, you know, it's like, I, you know, it's, uh, <clears throat> but, um, right here, I'm, uh, I'm flattening that out. Flattening that guy out. I'm sure you guys have seen this before, but I, uh, uh, I lean down to the very bit for, <laughs> it looks like my mat. It's, I had to pull out my thing cause I was too close to the table and stuff, but I, um, bring, uh, the very tip of the mouthpiece down to the graphite and then i bring the section of glass down to the graphite that's hot and puff into it to uh puff out that front a little bit and uh get a nice flat spot simultaneously so. 
yeah. that out a little nice. bit. I'm getting a little bit too much. I remember that and I just saw it again. I was getting a little bit too much. So you'll see I'm heating up the whole bottom a bunch to even out what was going on there. Let's see, see you thought it went a little bubble. too. Because I want that bubble to be real big. I'm pushing my luck with it. Okay. So the bottom was uh, puffing out and looking like a whole separate section that was like puffed out. It was like, uh, but so I warmed it up a little bit above it so that it would even out. So now it looks like one consistent bubble. Yeah. That's why it's so hot. I really could have focused a lot more on just the bottom there. And if I had done that previously and blown up a different bubble, I could have. Um, I was working with minimal glass there. I, sh I should have had a lot more glass there. Uh, but now that I did that, and because I used such a hot flame, I'm comfortable with to keep moving. Normally, I would probably put it in the kiln at this point. Um, but I'm comfortable to keep moving because I was just using my major flame. So I heat up the tip of that guy uh, right at the top to pop a hole. So I'm trying to pop a hole right at the top of the piece. And I heat it up just a little tiny piece and give it a little puff and popped a hole. Now I'm heating up a ride around the hole. And as I said uh, in, in uh, my tutorial online, hashtag Dakota Madrona Tutorials, uh, <laughs> you, heat around, you heat a dime size amount of glass right around the hole that you pop. I'm trying to go right around that. And as you heat it, because of gravity, and I'm holding it on one side, it wants to drip. It wants to drip. So that's why I switched hands, let it drip a little bit around the other way. Uh, I borrowed somebody's bull push for this because of the size of this. So that looks like a Griffin glass tool, if anybody's interested. It does look like a Griffin glass tool, but I do not own it. It is slightly smaller than the bull push that I use. And then I touch to the hole a little bit and give it a little puff. As I push, when I'm puffing, when uh, I puff to restrict the bowl around the tool, uh, because otherwise you can have kind of a wide bowl. I don't like a wide bowl. I want the bowl to hold on to whatever the fuck's it. Sorry, my language. <laughs> in there. Mm -hmm. I want it to hold on to whatever's in there, and and, uh, um, and uh, uh, have a nice restriction right up, uh, and be more cylindrical. I want my bowl to be more cylindrical than cone shaped. So give it a little puff, and that's what that's going to do. Uh, now I'm heating up where the carb's going to go. Uh, and uh, just give it a little heat there. I could find a different angle there to do that, but I'm getting real direct on it. Give it a little puff, pops open. Probably getting real direct because I didn't care. I'm moving fast. As you can see, I ran and over to the kiln. Yeah, there you yeah. go. Voila! I'm done. Yeah, man. Yeah, really great. And by the way, man, you, this, is, this is like HBO, dude. You can curse... Carrie's been over yeah, there bumping coke the whole night. It's crazy. I to keep I'm it just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so oh, at, at one point, somebody had um, had a question. Ty had a question. Do you guys have any tips for steady rotation? Um, well, over time, you're going to build the muscle memory, and you're going to build the muscles. So that's really going to be key in it. It's just time and experience. Uh, practice you can do when you're not glass blowing in the beginning was I would take two rods of glass or you could use drumsticks or something like that. Um, but rods of glass are more what you want to use. So you're more used to it. Um, probably eight mil, 10 millimeter. Uh, so what I just did there before I go on is uh, I just pulled off my blow tube. Then I heated up where I want my mouthpiece hold that into what I like to call an elf hat or a little point, you know, a little point there. And now I get my blow tube really hot and I'm going to squish my blow tube right on top of there, right to where I want my mouthpiece to be. And once I attach, I let it cool down and then I break it off right in one nice smack and it breaks off right where I connected the hot point. And that leaves me with a perfect little hole that I can polish off. So, um, yeah, great trick there. Um, but uh, you can take two rods. Yep, there we go. And I pop it right off. Blow on, I blew on it a little bit because there was a, um, uh, sometimes there's little tiny glass particles. You want to get rid of those before you polish it off. Getting the heat around there because little tiny stuff can get stuck to the wall of some shit. And then you go and touch it. And it, it's like the glass, the piece has a wart or something. Mm -hmm. So now, um, uh, now I polish it off and she's all done. Um, but you can yeah. take two glass rods and tape them together with about a half an inch or an inch of space between them with some uh, some uh, packaging tape or something. And then you spin them with your hands. 
while you watch TV. Uh, and if the tape crinkles, which it won't because it's going to be pretty strong, but it, but you can make it crinkle. If it crinkles, it means your hands are spinning at different speeds. Uh, so, and then if it's not crinkling, they are spinning at the right speeds. And what it will do is it's not going to want to crinkle. So it's going to force you to spin at the right speed. So you're going to spin there and, and it also will force you to spin uh, straight It'll, uh, or spinning them at each other. Cause that's another, that's going to be the next trick. So you want to spin, 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 just watch TV. Let yourself do it again. You're just building muscle memory and building muscles. Uh, I, I, in the beginning, and I know a lot of people, when you first start glass blowing, or even if you just go through a period of uh, glass blowing more than you normally do, you know, um, you just go to a next step, you know, you, you go from uh, part-time to full-time, you'll get some serious uh, muscle uh, issues with your forearms, or I've had shoulder issues, um, but forearms, uh, I've seen people uh, get a really bad carpal tunnel, you know, um, so it, it's a lot of work on your hand. You've got to build those muscles. Um, but after you go through that, you know, you can, um, after you build those muscles in your arm, uh, you'll see less and less of it. Uh, I personally, I, I have tendonitis. So I actually uh, see a bunch of doctors about it. And basically I just overdo what I do to myself. Like I just overwork my shoulders. And the best recommendation is stretching and adding muscle weight, you know, adding muscle to my torso so i'm recommended 10 muscle 10 pounds more to my torso to uh to to avoid um what basically tendonitis is is just flaring up of the muscles from overuse uh, so so anyway what getting back to the main point of this <laughs> is uh you can spin the rods uh tape together with packaging tape building up those muscles uh and uh then um then you cut the tape and just start trying to point the rods at each other. So I guess I'm on camera now. So you, you point the rods at each other. I don't, I don't have anything around here. I have pens. I could do a little pen or something. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, you basically your idea is to point the rods at each other. Um, and uh, once uh, once you've got that good without moving your hands, now try to tip your hands. You're going to tip your hands, still pointing at each other, still pointing at each other. And that's going to really build up those mem muscle memory and building up uh, to a point uh, it's going to build your muscle memory to a point where you can, for the most part, just do it blindfolded because you, your your hands are doing it on its own. Uh, it's like uh, uh, I was going to give a bad example. I don't have a good analogy for it off the top of my head, but um, yeah, you just have, you if you're uh, that's a good practice. Basically, you can do is um, you uh, take rods, tape them together, spin them, cut the tape, start pointing them at each other, angle your hands, start maybe. Uh, Distant, distancing yourself from the rods, but you and then keeping them together. But uh, you want to keep the distance between the rod to an inch. And then what you're going to see, let me see if I got something here. But you'll see um, if you're looking at the video, I'm holding up what looks like a sherbet glass pencil. But I, <laughs> but uh, I just said sherbet, 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 <laughs> sorbet. All right. Fuck it. Sorbet. <laughs> Uh, uh, so I'm holding up a sorbet pencil, um, which is actually, I'll be honest, is not a sorbet pencil. I made the pencil. What? Knock off. But <laughs> that plan, out post. Plan. It's a pencil for Christ's sake. Just for me. Actually, uh, yeah, he saw this and uh, I think he thought I, I think he thought he made it. But, um, but uh, <laughs> I'm, and I'm also holding a weird lighter that I have. So, um, and I'm pointing them at each other. And what you're gonna see is I'm pointing them at each other, they're close together. And when you start spinning them, uh, when your rods, they're gonna start, um, uh, they're not gonna stay straight. They're going, they're going to flop around a lot. And your goal is to learn to get less floppy. And that's what the muscle memory and the, the work is gonna do, is you're gonna, you need to make sure that they're pointing at each other. Um, uh, the consistent spin, um, that's what you're really going for. When you're glass blowing, you're not trying to have the fastest spin or the slowest spin. Maybe sometimes you want the slowest spin, um, but uh, you don't want, I don't know, but uh, you, you, um, uh, you, you're not necessarily going for the fastest spin or the slowest spin, but you're going for the most consistent spin. So uh, don't try to go real fast or try to go real slow or think about it too much. Try to just practice spinning it and spinning it at the same pace. 
And uh, once you build up those muscles, it really you'll you can just go from there, and, and you got it. You know, it's just don't think about it too much, I guess. Yeah, um, I want to add. Really, that was an excellent explanation. Practice rods yeah, with shit. <laughs> um, I want to just add. Do you know as quickly as you can get to doing that with real glass? It's important. And then the thing to not do is that when you first start, there's all these cool things like little implosions and this and that that you can do without putting two hands on the glass. But the faster that you've got a piece of glass, you know, between two handles and you're making your hands work in sync and actually feeling hot glass get molten between it and having to correct when it goes off, the faster you can do that, the better. And, like, even if you jump in and you're like, well, I like making this solid thing or the this or the that. Like, if you can just spend 20 minutes at the beginning of each session, get, like, uh, pull pull a point with a section of tube in the middle or put a section of 25 mil, like, tubing, you know, like heavy wall tubing in on two handles. And blow that out to a bubble and then condense it back to a piece of tubing and then blow it out to a bubble. Just keep doing this and watch and, you know, and watch when it flexes and... And now you got to correct a little here, and, and, and it's just what Dakota was mentioning about building that muscle memory. Like, my, my point here is just don't be scared to do it with hot glass. The faster you get used to working with two hands, I mean, you can work like this, you can work like this, you do whatever you want. But the faster you actually work with, it, with glass between two hands getting hot... You know, it's like be, it's like being a DJ, you know, or used to be being a DJ. You know, you had to, like, match the beats when you've got two things coming into different ears. It's very similar. Um, the faster you can build that muscle memory, the better. And, you know, a lot of people, myself included, you know, I learned this the hard way. You know, I was like, man, I wish I'd started doing hollow work with two hands on the glass sooner. Even solid work with two hands on the glass. You know, gather some glass up, pull a consistent stringer. Anything that gets your two hands talking to one another with hot glass in the middle is going to really build that muscle memory that way too. So just don't be a, don't be scared. I know it's hard. It's easier at first to like have it on one hand, you know, and condense that bubble back, you know, and that sort of thing. But the faster you can condense it back, you know, and then bring it out of the flame and, and eat, give it a puff. The the all these little mechanics that have to happen. You know, they're not going to happen if you don't do it with two hands on the glass. So just be a man or, a, you know, an adult <laughs> glass blower and get Thank two hands you. on that glass Thank as you. fast as possible. Sorry, that wasn't the best. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Be a, be a man, Hogan. Or whatever. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Anybody remember Randy Savage's diss track on Hulk Hogan? If if you haven't, you got to look it up. It's called Be a Man, Hogan. And it's the oh, best. Oh, this sounds familiar. I think you shared this. Anyways, all right, all right, guys. Um, next up, yo, we got. I got. I got a bunch of sticker packs to give away for game time. We're gonna play games. I'm gonna show you guys a quick video in case you're not familiar with how this works. Here we go. Let me pull this up. Thank you, everybody, for watching. And if you really still want to hang out, we are definitely having a good time here. So yeah, it's happening. You know, check it out for like the next ten minutes and see so if you, you really want to Jackbox hang around. Games. But uh, it, it's a good Getting time. Started is easy. For Jackbox games, you use your phone or tablet as the controller, and up to eight people can play. Sometimes more. But don't worry, you don't have to download anything or be on the same Wi-Fi. It's really easy, and I'm going to quickly explain how. Once you get through go. the menu to start the game you want to play, you'll get a four-letter room code for your game. To join the game, each player using their phone or tablet Can goes to the website jackbox.tv using whatever web browser they like normally right use. Not right now, no, like they're this. seeing the... If it doesn't look anything they, they like this, make that, sure they, they went to jackbox.tv. Once they're nope. at the website, each player puts that four-letter room code yeah. from the TV here, okay. and whatever name they want to use in the game <laughs> here. Then they hit the play <laughs> button and they should be connected to the game. Once everyone who wants to play is joined and is ready, the first player that joined, designated with the fancy title of VIP, can start the game from their device. And that's it. Enjoy your time with Jackbox Games what am I looking and tell at? them the disembodied <laughs> voice sent you. <laughs> All right, so there was the instructions on the game. We're actually going to um, pull it up and start. All right, check this out. I know, Dakota, we're entering into the so future. So just for Dakota. When Mike plays something on a screen that has volume like that, we don't hear it. Yeah, you guys aren't going to hear the game, the unfortunately. The audience gets it, so sorry. Yeah, ah, sorry, Dakota. <laughs> I know. I they know. know what's up, and we don't. <laughs> okay. All right, here we go. We're launching the game. 
Things are gonna happen here. Hopefully, I'll be able to get it on the right screen and everything. You'll catch up quick, though. Dakota. I was really up to mind it, <laughs> No, 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 no. It's no gravy. All right, so jackbox.tv. All right, here we go. Room Wait, code you're, you're, you're over there. <laughs> 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 All right, we're gonna we're gonna try Fibbage three. We gotta change the settings real quick though. Full screen mode is on. All right, on. so if you're wanting to play, get over to Jackbox.tv. Get ready to enter that room code. Put your name in. If you're playing, um, if you're watching the TV and you have a phone, that's great. Your phone's gonna be the controller, and the TV is gonna show this what you're watching. If you're on a computer, you can open another window and get over to Jackbox TV, and that's gonna be your controller. So if you unfortunately are watching on your device, then you're gonna be in the audience and you're gonna laugh at us. Um, but if you can, if you can find two windows, that's ideal. Like Alejandro says, lay back, grab your CBD, a soda, kick back, and relax. And there is going to be a giveaway. Mike, what are the details on that giveaway? We have... We have tubing and a heat mat to give away from Acadian Glassworks. Oh, Dakota could use that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we have a... Uh, we have a $100 gift certificate to classes with Andrew Pollock. Let me pull up his uh, thing there. All right, look at that. Full room. So, yeah, guys. We're, we're playing. Everybody in the audience will get a chance to participate. But if you're going to play, you can play. Acadian Glass works really straight up. There it is. Boom. Look, that, that, thank, thank you, Doug, for the shout out. Oh, awesome. I can, yeah, I mean, okay, he's one of one of my sponsors as well, man. I've been pitching in all these years, helping me do this cool thing. And then Andrew uh, Pollock, man, there, there, there is class with the Kai dies. If you're not so familiar, awesome. go check it out. Kai dies, y'all, with the torch shirts, man. That's the homie. Yeah, Look at that. I've ever seen in my life. Isn't that tight? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Alright, anyways, um, oh shit, we're so ready I to think, play. Yeah, I think if we're in the audience, we can still enter the room and vote, maybe? Yeah, the audience can vote and stuff, that's gonna be so cool. So when it starts, yeah, you can still enter that room name, and if you're not, if, if your name is not one of the people there, you can still vote, so don't leave, and we'll play another couple rounds too, so if you have no idea what's going on and you really want to play, just hang out. See what this is about, and then you know, here we go. The next round. Let's do this. What is the four letter code? You're not even in. <laughs> well, no, I'm not. Sorry, I, I decided to let and else I could join definitely in. I'm in the audience defeat a round. timber wolf in single combat. There we like go. if I LJ really e. had to. Thanks, Layman. Hey, eight players. <laughs> That's seven future losers. Carrie, oh, you're talking over the game. If anybody else wants to join, they can get in the audience at any time. The audience gets to throw extra lies into the mix and guess the truth along with players. Let's go. This is round one where you'll get 500 points for fooling the other game. players with your lies. And you'll net a thousand for finding the truth. It's called Jackbox. <laughs> Select Jackbox. category. It's hungry as shit. I like the curly fries. <laughs> First question. Coined in 1829, cacistocracy is the word for a society governed by blank. Now write a lie on your device that the other players might think is true. If you can't think of anything, that lie for me button will give you a suggestion for half the points. Do it already. That's Illuminati. I'm going to get me upset. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I read that very well. <laughs> See, I'm in the audience and I was able to vote. So the audience still gets, still gets a vote. Yeah, the audience can still vote and play along. Hurry, use the lie for me button if you're stuck.
Okay, those are the choices. Touch the truth on your device now. <laughs> I thought this was about glass blowing. <laughs> <laughs> no, man. Game time is where all those pretenses are dropped. Although people are welcome to make glassy lies or answers to the game. I want. <laughs> I'm gonna say ten pants. <laughs> All right, let's see what you guys picked. <laughs> All right. What? That's right. Of course, of course. What? What do you mean, of course? It's believable. believable. Yeah. See. Well, women, women wasn't enough letters. <laughs> <laughs> wow, look at all these scores bumping up here. This is great. Oh, damn. So what's the food thing? Oh, please. Timely, you decide. That's Got right. on the lies and guess the truth. <laughs> Somehow I'm in the lead, baby. Yeah! <laughs> the rich get richer. Alright, choose a category. And so wait, what was the answer? It was the worst people? Yep, the worst people, that's the name of that, yeah, that system that of government. Difficult. Let me do it for you. I like this idea. Yeah. <laughs> Here's the Sounds question. Fun. <laughs> Ever heard of climacophilia? It's one you can only be sexually gratified when you blank. Oh my god. Type in your lies now. Wow. Oh, come on. Is this what they mean when they say tree hugger? <laughs> I don't know that that's the correct Latin for that. <laughs> <laughs> Write something quick or use the lie for me, no, buddy. Guys. I can only get off when it rains. <laughs> <laughs> Which one's the truth? Oh man, here we go. <laughs> when you touch feet, that sounds like the coronavirus thing to do. <laughs> Somebody's out there getting their shit off all the time. Oh, damn. Remember they got like that Wuhan shuffle or whatever where people tap their feet and do a little dance to say hi? That guy's, Wait. it was started by a fetishist. Are you sure you're not talking about the Vietnamese dance that shows you how to wash your hands properly? And no, no, no. This is a shuffle they do with their feet because you can't touch your hands right now. Come on, let's oh, get, get with the program, all right, baby. All right, all right, all right. All right. Uh... All right, who picked what? That sounds like a mic answer. Yeah, but no, it's just the phrasing oh, is... It wasn't. Yeah. There's an issue with the way it's structured, so it wasn't me. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What the? I don't know, I just don't get it! Yeah, yeah. What? Seriously? Oh, oh. <laughs> That's the, note, the most skeptical end. <laughs> the announcer just fell down the host, or down the stairs, rather. <laughs> Ooh, I <wanna> climb. climb <laughs> Alright. <laughs> I'm in the game, babe. I'm still in the game. <laughs> you are. You can look at this, but don't touch. Ophelia, <laughs> exactly. I'm not scared of those stairs, baby. <laughs> I want them. <laughs> Give me those stairs. <laughs> oh my god, what? Uh oh. That thing? What the fuck is that thing? Obviously.
Am I, is this a reference to the drawing? That yes, apparently, I yes. Think so. I gotta use the bathroom real quick. Oh, this is on. terrible. <laughs> an angel notebook. Yeah, so it's an angel kneeling. I'm not quite sure what the the dotted lines look like a reference to something. Hurry up! Use a suggestion if you can't think of anything. I don't have any answers, but I don't know that I really am. Nothing. Yes, the CBD got my Okay, murder. where's the truth? <laughs> a punty. Yeah, yeah, I think that's it. Ooh, Halloween decoration. That's a good one, too. Graveside mailbox. Mailbox. <laughs> that's a good idea, too, though. A Pez dispenser. An ashtray. 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 Card holder. So many good answers here. Mailbox. Mailbox. It's a fucking mailbox. Without a bank, it's wood. Graveside mailbox. Why not, right? Uh, graveside mailbox is acceptable, but why does that have to be so specific? Mailbox fits in the, the letters. Right? And yeah, there's just a little teeny tiny gap there. You just shove something in there. It's your best wishes. Okay, what did everyone for your pick? Part in the angel delivers them <laughs> to the netherworld. That has to be the truth. Come on. Come on. Well, we gave nicknames a thousand points. Come on, Smiley. Ah, Hanoon fell fell into Mike's life. I got you, Hanoon. Ha ha. <laughs> I just oh. went away. I prefer to have all my mail Wait a minute. Was there, were there two graveside mailboxes? It's so stupid. It's Dude, wow! I'm I opening see. up there was a lead. A mailbox and a graveside mailbox. Wow. This is awesome. <laughs> I love when I win. Get ready Mike, for Mike loves no the game. All the points are doubled. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here Give we go. Category. What? Noon gets to choose the category. No, please allow me. Oh, he didn't choose. He was so offended by being fooled by my lie. In 1942, the town of Pascagoula, Mississippi, was right, type in your lies. Um, okay, yeah. Those are, those are strange things. Mm-hmm. If it were Carrie, she'd probably like close the cabinets and like put away trash on the counter. Yeah. Cheryl. Yeah. Me and Carrie have an imaginary coworker now that we're both working at home. We blame any problems on her. <laughs> I got the All idea right, on the internet. The truth. Yes. Rub his butthole for forks. Huh? Wow. On forks. Man. Game time is canceled. <laughs> no, I'm just playing. Pose. <laughs> Whoa, there's some. Yeah. There's some stuff going on here. Steal underwear, sniff underwear, take a nap. Mike's favorite pastime. I was going to say take a bath. So well, that's the other nap. one. I, I will say take a nap. I'm losing this game, but I'm, take, I'm saying take a nap. Cut their hair in their sleep, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Great. Alejandro says, can you turn the game speech up in volume? The what now? Who's, okay. What do they want Let's turned up? Can you turn the game speech up in volume? I don't, I don't know what that means. Yes, I can. Okay. And it was All right, also... we know what Hanun would do. I'm just playing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you guys are like twins. <laughs> oh, my. Uh, yeah. Baby, you keep the bedroom door locked when we have him visit. <laughs> <laughs> oh my. Hmm. What? Yeah, that's the one I picked too. Damn. Damn. All right, wow. Everyone the Rachel. Where's my lie though? Apparently nobody chose it. Nobody chose my lie. You guys are dead to me. Take a dab. No more you? prizes. Damn. Actually, look at, look at these scores. Woo. Oh, RW, you better okay, come harder than. Yeah. Okay. Better come harder yeah, than jerking yeah. off. If you know what I mean. A boom. Double C. Choose a category. Double C. Let me help with that. Is this part of the game or an advertisement? 
Uh, no, double okay, here's the Z, question. Um, is now Before he became category. famous, Dr. Oh Seuss... Because the game is made to look like an old catalog. ...with the strange title, A Pocket Book <laughs> of Blank. Answer your lies now. <laughs> okay. Okay, seek no the truth. No. Just throwing it out <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I'm sure Dr. Seuss has created a 1941 book with the strange title, A Pocketbook of Boner. <laughs> I am 100% sure exactly. Yeah. So, Dakota, if you want to visit the YouTube chat, you can... Um... Go to torchtalk.com. There you go. Open up a new window, torchtalk.com, and the chat's pick? right there. Yeah. I already have it open for you. Oh, okay. There you, go. there you go. Good one, Beans. A noon getting points. It's a little yeah. delayed. That's funny. I can listen to myself. Oh, yeah, yeah. I feel like an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> Is, uh, I don't know how to get to the chat. If you're logged in to a YouTube account, you should see the chat. When you go to the... No, I'm not logged in. Okay, that would be your issue. Yeah. Well, I'm not logged in on my... Boners, Mike, the truth. I mean, wow. Dakota was like, it's definitely that, right? So... Right? Yeah, yeah. Who am I to argue? Come on. That's not possible. <laughs> well, dude, all those guys were crazy, Dr. man. Seuss. Yeah, what's his name? Like Shell Silverstein, he used to write all this stuff for Playboy about getting high and stuff. Man, is awesome. You know, like them, none of them dudes were just writing books for kids. Let's put it that way. Yeah, but uh, so Dakota, if you do find that chat, R. W. has a question for you. Is sexual arousal from seeing someone blank? Yeah. Okay, enter your lies. Yeah, it's a, well, what? Mm. I'll never. I, I don't know. I'll never. I'll never, look, I'll never look at the world the same again because I can't be right, and it is. Right. And I know it is. And I know he, he's done other things. It's like the like, I'm saying something. Mmm, man, what is this? The options I get aren't don't sound like they're good ones, but. Anyway, to go to our our w oh, going to the gynecologist. Right? How do you work on keeping your line so straight and hands so steady? Write something Drink quick like or a use bunch a of coffee and Dakota knows his boners. Yeah, Dakota knows his boners. <laughs> <laughs> Guys reamed a lot of holes, if you know what I'm saying. Clearly not. Clearly, I'm, I'm okay, very uneducated the in the world of, of boner literature. Well. All right. What? I'm what? On keeping my line so straight and hands so steady. Well, that is very flattering. <laughs> um, uh, well, I'd say that my lines aren't very straight. I'd say my hands are not so steady. But uh, again, I would say just practice. Um, but uh, somebody said that smoking made them made right, their hands shake. So. I, I stopped dabbing before work, and uh, that helped. Um, uh, but if FBI and CIA are listening, I meant CBD oil. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, um, and then. And it was uh, well. So I'm focusing too heavily on the, the steady hands. The steady hands uh, come more like natural and, you know, like, like I said, not smoking and little things, just uh, finding out what works best for you. 
Um, also, uh, I've seen other people that do dot work have uh, little blocks and graphite and stuff that they stick at chest height that they lean their arms on so that they can keep their hands steady. I don't do that, but uh, you can do that. But I would say the number one thing is about finding the sweet spot in the flame so that you have the most control over your strainer uh, that you can have. The sweet spot would be, um, you know, where uh, you're almost bouncing this tiny little flame off of the area you're drawing, and then the flame is just barely heating up that, that stringer so that you can have full control over the stringer as you lie it, while simultaneously almost using gravity, but not quite gravity, to kind of push it down into the flame. Um, uh, and, and you feel it out so it's not a wiggly line and you don't lose control over it. You have all this control because the only place it's going to go is the direction you're pushing. You know, so you're pushing it in some direction and allow, giving it just enough heat to give it give so that, you know, so the straightness of the line is really just the amount of control I'm, I'm, I'm getting on the stringer. Um, uh, because when I do it, I'm pushing in a direction. So if you, you know, throw a ball in the direction, it's gonna go straight. That's a kind of what I'm doing, but I, I'm, I'm uh, right, using the heat the to make sure um, it's just barely malleable to the, so uh, I have just the right amount of control. So you just find that right spot in the flame, um, right where you have the, the most control and then use that to your advantage to get the nice straight line. And uh, over time, you'll get faster and faster at it, which is what I was doing in the video earlier. Uh, just uh, basically I was shoving the flame onto the clear glass and just pushing the line down and doing it as fast as I can, kind of like, you know, I was, I was being less uh, careful of making sure everything was absolutely perfect, but I was getting a straight line still just using the general idea of pushing and finding that sweet spot. Um, so, you know, <clears throat> I hope that helps answer the question. And I Let's hope that my long talking selected. wasn't horrible for the game. I didn't mean for that to be uh, <laughs> so long. We're prioritizing the, the hangout chat over the game talk, because, I mean, you don't need to hear it to see, but it's just background noise and... It's not, we don't want to make that more important. So don't worry about that, man. You do you. We're here to have really, man, it's seriously, I really appreciate you being here with us and adding so much to that demo and even our game time now. So yeah, dude, don't worry yeah, about yeah, that. Yeah, really You're the priority. You yeah, I, yeah I, I really, really appreciate you guys having me. No Thank worries, you. dude. Hell yeah. It's like, you. you know, answer questions while, while I'm here. And you know, you know, when we come back, so. I yeah, appreciate you, man. Yeah, now if you got your phone, you're more than welcome to jump in the next round here because this is the final fibbage, apparently. How do I do that? Uh, you, there'll be the game code that pops up. You go to jackbox.tv on your phone. Damn, they got me. I, uh, I've been out of the game this far. I've, I've been keeping track of my own score. And I'm, I'm a loser. Hashtag <laughs> <laughs> winning. Yeah. Mike, you owe me a sticker pack is what it is. <laughs> RW, uh, Mike Mason at gmail.com. Hit me with an address. And yo, for the 95 people who are watching that didn't play, um, go ahead and throw in a number, 1 through 200. And we'll pick some sticker packs. I know not everybody has a second screen. So I just want you guys to know that that there'll be some packs and everything for people who played, and then a little bit later we'll go ahead and give away that tubing and the hundred dollar certificate and stuff, and we'll use those numbers for that. I don't want to um, I don't want to penalize anybody just because they don't have two screens at once or whatever. If they're here just if you're here for the party, then it's all fucking good. Don't worry about the fucking game. But there are some for the game. So RW, I got you, baby. Um, you said one through two hundred, right? One through two hundred. That's right. So, so West, Wes, yeah, West, come on, dog, reel, reel it in, baby. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, well, let's Dakota do a game. Ty, Dakota Ty said, "Thank you for all the rotation tips." What, what's happening? Why want to let me pick yeah, a new new player? What? Oh, it's doing the thing. What's happening here? Finish. Only fooled one people one time. So yeah, if anybody wants to play now, is the time to get onto that Jackbox.tv and get ready with the room code, which is this time. It's about to pop. Yeah, it'll show up here in a second. There it is. B W P N. W P N. That's right. I'm in, baby. Can't stop me. I'm VIP. 
Mike RW wants you to give that sticker pack to somebody else. Just give that shit away. He's, won, he's yeah. already won some, huh? All right, that's yeah. very noble of you, Playboy. We'll do that then. Spencer, we're gonna go ahead and give away the Acadian to maybe after this game. I don't know. We're, uh, your numbers is how we'll give the Acadian tube away. So just throw in a number 1 through 200. Make sure nobody else picked your number already because whoever picked a first is who will win. It looks so, like everybody's in. Let's do this. All right, so this one, the, the, the 1 through 200 numbers is for the Acadian? Is that what you're saying? It's for the Acadian and for sticker packs. We're not going to make everybody pick numbers multiple times. Right, right. So everybody get your your numbers in, I am and, and I, only I assume after this next round we'll pick numbers, that, and do they have players? to be here to win? Okay, everybody yes. Look to your left. Now look oh. your right. There you go. One of you <laughs> to code it, like, oh, I gotta I stick around because I want that Canadian tubing. Join the audience any <laughs> Okay, all right, all right. Although Acadian is dope. BWPN is the room number, so everybody go get that. Yeah, you can jump in the audience still. Get in the audience and vote. <laughs> All right, RW, I got you. You're it. We'll we'll keep you in the running for the two. Pick a number, just you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like fuck that sticker pack. I got enough stickers. Well, you know, in yeah. my opinion, this is probably a, a coronavirus question. Mm. <laughs> All right, I'm in. I'm in. I want to give a shout out to some homie in the thing. Yeah, man. Hold on. <laughs> Go full shout out <laughs> mode. I may have lost it. <laughs> okay, it's all good. It's all good. But yeah, when man, you know. Back, feel free to pop that out. There we go. No, it's just a silly comment. Well, don't shy virus. There it is. Don't shy away <laughs> from those. <laughs> all right, what do we got here? Huh. Yeah, shout out to Russell Hurley. Because you want an orgasm? Here's your orgasm. Fuck you. <laughs> That's what he wrote in the comments. Okay. Okay. So I know he's here. And nice. he knows who I am. So that's cool. <laughs> Let's see how things shook out. Motherfuckers. And when I was talking earlier, <laughs> somebody commented and they, like asked me like, what the fuck is this? And it was like, I think it's just some dude talking. <laughs> 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 Peter mentioned earlier this was the, the yeah. most like fully narrated demo by an artist on Torch Talk ever. And yep. and people appreciate that, Takoda, so thank you. Yeah. They're like finally someone shut Mike up. <laughs> I very much appreciate that. <laughs> you deserve a sticker pack for that at least. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Carrie found that a little too funny. <laughs> to say. No. There is uh, something in chat. In 2017, police in Lakewood, Florida were called about a man who was blank in a busy street. Write your lies mm -hmm. down. Those noises are coming from Carrie, by the way. Yeah, yeah, always. There. Just choking it up. All right, the man was busy doing what? You'd hear noises from me too, but there's a lady <laughs> present. <laughs> Where? <laughs> Hurry, use the lie for me button if you're stuck. Okay, which one is the true one? I passed out. Wow, there's some really good answers here. 
Mm -hmm. Multiple puppet answers. What? Just saying. Blowing glass. That could be possible too. I've seen the setup for it. Hmm. I gotta go with the puppet. I hope it's the puppet. Me too. <laughs> Me too. I choose based on the world I want to live in. <laughs> and FYI, while these while these answers are being handed out, Ty says, Mike, we can't get enough of your voice. The best glass narrator. <laughs> you guys. <laughs> now I know you bullshitting, though. Oh, Not a display or whatever. <laughs> he wants to stick your back. He's working yeah. on it. Yeah. <laughs> Ty better be up. What's up? <laughs> okay. Oh, RW is cut, playing to win. Eating pancakes. Mm -hmm. What the fuck? Why would you call the police the about that? That, he was using that was my second choice. Syrup. Well, he's in the middle of the street. In the middle of the street, I guess it is. Well, it's just in a busy street. I thought it'd be like an intersection. Can do anything. Yeah, right? It's like he's not walking. He's just standing there eating pancakes. I mean, if I was in the middle of my own street, which is not busy, and I ate pancakes, yeah. <laughs> Be all right, good. Exactly. They'd be like, ah. category is you. It's just Dakota. Yeah, I'm gonna do the sometimes. Yeah. To do it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right, here it is. <clears throat> McCarthy admitted that her hilarious character in Bridesmaids was an homage to blank. Type in your lives now. I'm always super up to date on Melissa McCarthy's. Yeah, I was about to say, dude. I don't um, want to. I don't want to Google this. In, intent on her <laughs> acting endeavors. Yeah, yeah. I mean, who isn't? Man, it's really, all I Google. I don't even. I never even watched that movie, so I'm at a total loss here. Oh, Mike, don't try and fool everybody. Uh huh. <laughs> we watched this movie? movie like twice a week. No, but, uh, okay. <laughs> this isn't. I don't. I don't care for this thing you do. Where? Oh come on! I'm just if playing. <laughs> this, then they're really. They don't know the deal. <laughs> oh. oh my God! Melissa McCarthy admitted that her hilarious character mm. was an homage to Melissa McCarthy. Hmm. <laughs> I would be so right. amazing. I oh, these are I, all shitty choices. I want to be that person so much. <laughs> Her own wedding. You hear Dakota Madrona was in a movie. Yeah, it was an homage. It was <laughs> to 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 <laughs> the whole concept of his character was right, an homage to this fit. Dakota Madrona dude. <laughs> And then you bastard. How could you do this to me? Oh, go beans. Mm. Okay. So, <clears throat> should I stay till the end? Is there like a? Is there like a? a Dude, nice, no, you're I, welcome. I feel like I should do a like the the nice like goodbye and everything. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'd be one at the end, but uh, no, um, no, man. We'll uh, since I'm not playing the game and everything, I, I uh, feel like my uh, feel like I'm just a voice. So, <laughs> all right, well, we bid you good night, Dakota. Thank you so much for joining Thank us, man. I really appreciate you. Now for round two. Yeah, man, I, I really appreciate you guys having me. I, no worries, I, I, dude. I, yeah, I'm very honored so to uh, dude. To, get to, uh, to do this, and uh, I had a lot of fun. I had a, I had a lot of fun getting to uh, narrate, awesome. yeah. yeah. Dude, thank you so much. I really enjoyed it. Thank you so much, Dakota. Yeah, I really appreciate you, brother. Hell yeah. All right, man. I'm going to switch back to the game. Yeah, you can totally. dip out whenever you want now that we've done a, a proper goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, much great. love, homie. Have a great night. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. All right. Yeah, have a good eyes. night. All right, here we go. We've got a lie up. David Rockefeller. Whoa, all right. Oh, my God. Uh, Oh boy. Mm -hmm. There's some ridiculous choices we've got here.
But yeah, that was really great, man. It was so dope to have Dakota, and yeah, I think he may have clocked a high word count for narration. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty amazing. That was that was definitely awesome. Yeah, no, he knows what he's talking about, and you know, it was like any time I was just about to jump in, like he was, he he immediately transitioned to the thing I was thinking about. It was great. He, if I ever like get hit by a bus, dude, Dakota should be the new host of Torch right. Talk. We'll, we'll put that in your will. <coughs> hmm. Hmm. Class blowing tools. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's a good one. Used hmm. rubbers. Oh my. Whoa. <laughs> I didn't see that one. It's it's in chat. Apparently, somebody that didn't get to participate is just making up their own answers, which is you know, why not? <laughs> A billionaire's okay, collection of pick? over one hundred and fifty thousand. <laughs> hmm. Oh, good one. And Hanoon. it was also. <laughs> And believe it or not, it was and also... Beans. What? And RW. <laughs> Apparently people think rich people like to read books. I don't know. Good one, Fonzie. Beatles, I like that. <gasps> Wait a minute. That, I bet, is an amazing collection. Obsessed with Beatles. Oh my god, Rockefeller was masked crime fighter, the Beatle Crusader, this whole time? <laughs> if anybody's interested in looking at bugs. Which I am. Fun fact, Fibbage is based on an old Russian trivia game. You buy that? Well, anyway... Russian saying about things not always oh, working see. the first time is translated as the first blank is always a blob. Answer your lies now. First cut. Mm. 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 How could y'all lie to me? <laughs> Hurry, hit the lie for me button if you can't think of something. Okay, here are your choices. <laughs> oh my. Oh god. <laughs> well, the you know, first shit is in always the morning, a blob. Exactly. <laughs> the first mud pile is always a blob. Alright, yeah, yeah. So, do you think you're gonna choose a number after this game and then continue and. Yeah, we're gonna give some shit away. And then we'll play some more games. All right. Just want to give some people some expectations so they don't have to play games that they don't want to, you know, but... Are you suggesting right. they might only be here for the giveaway, Carrie? Never. Our audience is here because they love Great what we're doing. <laughs> <laughs> Which is play games! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Motherfucker. Watch out, folks. I tried to get Mike to give in to the idea of playing the rapper game earlier, but really, I just wanted to see him and Dakota go head to head. So maybe we can do that another time because I think yeah. they, would, they would be good contestants for when that game. The for the rap game? Cake, the yeah, the rap steak, game. The first pot of water. Um, first It'd be awesome if salt. you guys could just randomly um, play that sometime this week. I'd watch. 
Well, if enough of you guys enjoy this, we could do like a specific just game night. Maybe, you know, like, I don't know. Anything is possible. Now listen up. True. Taking measures to the extreme, Corey Taylor of Chicago decided to fake his own death in order to get out of blank. Okay, enter your lives. Oops, says, I want to play games with you cool peeps. <laughs> Seen an Adam Sandler movie. Sounds uh, very Larry David. Sounds like an episode of the uh, Curb Your Enthusiasm right here. Okay, faking his death in order to get out of something. Yes. This does seem yeah. a bit Larry Absolutely. David ish, sure. <laughs> Hurry up! Use a suggestion if you can't think of anything. Okay, take a look and find the truth. Oh my! Some of these answers. <laughs> Some of these are good, actually, man. You gotta fake right? your debt to get out of alimony and child right? support. Right? I mean, child damn. Jury duty. To get out of sentence. Slipknot? I don't know. This phone contract? That's true. Those things are yeah, pretty draconian. Fun, right? yeah. <laughs> marriage. Well, marriage. Till death do us part, right? I like the speeding ticket one. Just, like, pulled <laughs> over and he's like, Yo, I'm dead! Officer, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'll never know. Okay, let's take a look. <laughs> good one, Mike. Good one. Hunun is particularly susceptible to my lies, I've determined. Keep this in mind, Hunun. <laughs> <laughs> Good one, RW. <laughs> <laughs> uh, That's a good lie. Good. You gotta do That's some shit like I, that. Yeah, I, I felt susceptible to that one. <laughs> you identify with that one, Carrie? No, I felt susceptible to that one. Your ex husband? Jeez. Fake this. Fake my yes! Dad, yes! My dad. <laughs> what? <laughs> Wait, what are you saying? <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so Spencer's gonna try and get in on the next round. I'm not doing well. Maybe you wanna sit Welcome next round out? Finish. Oh wait, you're the host. It's your yeah. last chance at points gotta and it's worth triple. Don't blow it. You gotta be. You gotta Back be in the late in 1980s, the, the small town of Lajitas, Texas, Play elected Clay Henry to be their mayor. Together. Henry was unique in that he was a blank that blank. Write your lies now. Alright, I tried. What? Mm-hmm. La Hita. Okay. Huh. Interesting choices they've given me. Don't die, Mike, they say. Corona dabs. Mike had some respiratory issues while I was gone, but you are <laughs> fairly certain it's not the coronavirus. I had to Google this one, man. The real answer is fucking amazing. Oh, Mike. I'm not gonna pick it or anything. I'm not in it to win it, but... A Mormon that blazed chronic. <laughs> and a blind man that was black. <laughs> Look no further, fella. You found him. Clayton Bigsby. I wondered why you got so quiet suddenly. What? Well, it just got really quiet suddenly. Never. I can't pick up the slack. What's going on? Mike's googling Let's answers. Let's see what everybody selected. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh my god. RW, I can't believe you got away with that Great shit. <laughs> I fell susceptible to that one again, Hanoon. Hanoon's getting me. What the fuck? Of course it never got buried. He's a zombie. What? Yeah, I know. I want to move there immediately. <laughs> And it's not the 1890s, it was the 1980s. <laughs> well, that's damn RW is like nice. kicking ass, dude. This so, is two in a row. Yeah, nice, RW. good stuff. So, again, I assume he's given up that sticker pack and uh, hoping that he got, I got a lot of likes, number. though. Awesome, yeah, yeah. <laughs> How do you like stuff? Is that the audience what they get to do? I don't know. Maybe that's my yeah. Maybe it might be the audience picks. Is All right. I'm not really sure. Well, let's go, um, guys. Let's go ahead and and give away uh, some shit. Um, I want to thank the homie man, Katie and Glass, for giving uh, this tubing. We're gonna give away the tubing. It's got like some crushed opal shit. It's got the the some tubes of cool colors, and then we'll give away the heat mats. I like, guess two separate things. And then I've got some sticker packs to give away. And then we've got a $100 gift certificate to the homie Andrew Pollock's uh, classes. Let's just go ahead and um, make a moment of it and give away a few things. And then we'll play some more games. You know, I, I want, man, I'm happy to do this. This is so fun to me. Some people are like, thanks for this extra effort. And I was like, this is not an extra effort, dogs. This is just me having fun with my friends. I really appreciate you guys. So this it ain't no thing. Um, but I'm also a hero, so, you know. Total, total hero. Completely. Right, um, Jason, yeah, all right, what did I say, one through 200? Yes, you did. All right, well, look, let's give away that dank-ass tubing first, okay? Because I know that's the Dizzle Rizil. Um, clickety-clickety-clack, 40. What's up? Do we have a 40? Are we doing an exact? Numbers yeah, we're here. doing exact numbers. Hell yeah, All we're right. doing exact I, I numbers. I do not see a 40 in my, in my nope. search. Nope. Oh, oh, 70, no, nope, no, no, no. Sorry, what's that? <laughs> you fucked up, Drew. All right, what? Not to rub it in or anything, but... This music is amazing for giveaways, by the way. <laughs> You'll have to hear it later, Carrie. I'm glad you enjoy uh, some practice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait. I, I didn't no, no, that's the bit rate of the show. Oh, right, 139. Okay. Oh shit, there it is, Wes Anderson. That's you, baby. Um, Wes, I need you to uh, hit me at mikemason at gmail .com for that that priggity prize. As um, soon as possible. Yeah, and like then now. just do it now. Open another window and do it now. Yeah, do it now. You got like 24 hours or tops, because I hate hate people that make me wait. All right. Um, he doesn't hate people. He hates the people that make him wait. Behavior <laughs> of those people. No, I hate that shit. Let's just not <laughs> play games. All right. All right. All right. Now, so that was that was for the fucking dope ass tubing. That was like the mega grand priggity prize, thanks to Acadian Glassworks. And homie, I just want to take a second to say, like, um, dogs, if you need crushed opal tubing. You know, there, there, there's sort of something to be said for uh, the, the the roll dog's stuff because he charges pennies for it, and it, it, the, the the money that he asked for this, what is this like, giant chunks of it for sixty four bucks, fifty five bucks? You know, these are enough to make. You know, look, look at look at how thick that is. These are huge pieces. Tons yeah, of fucking crush. Gorgeous. Yeah. Um. Oh yeah, me. Uh, let me actually pop that up. Sorry, I had it on the, the thing there. Look at this stuff that you can buy from the homie. Not to turn this into an ad or nothing, man. I mean, I but I mean, he was super kind, and I want to take a second to show y'all what you can get through the homie, man. Like, it, and it just <laughs> he's making he, he man. It really makes a lot of sense to buy it through him instead of making it yourself. I mean, the the price that he's charging and the amount of opal in it, it's like so dense that you can pull this down and make a whole bunch of sections with it. It's, um, man, it's super generous. all this stuff is super nice, but I really think like, man, th th there's a point to be made for like just buying this crushed opal tubing from the homie, you know, like if you want something really special or unique, but anyways, okay, so that was that. 
But he also threw in a fucking heat mat, and and these are like for the cats who don't want to wipe it off like like Dakota does. <laughs> so let's go ahead and give that away. Clickety clack, one eighty two. Where's my screen? All right, here we go. One eighty two. No. Click to the clack forty five. Ooh, I have a nope one forty five. All right, what? No. Okay, fair enough. And by the way, guys, some homies were asking about the torch talk thing. Because right torch now, talk? it's it's torch talk, not, not torch, torch talk. talk. You know what I'm saying? Torch talk, not torch talk. <laughs> uh, that's the concept now, you guys. We're starting earlier and we're going later just to have some fun, play some games together. We'll be back to the games in just a minute, but we're only pausing to give away some dank shit. This is fucking awesome. I love this. Um, do we... All right, we got to keep picking numbers. Sorry, I'm getting distracted. I wanted to... <laughs> <laughs> I'm a terrible game nothing? host. All right, whoa, 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 wait, wait. Where's this? Oh, it's that one? fucking no, no, thing no. again. We already picked one of those. Right, right, yeah, right, yeah. 140, yeah, well, exactly. <laughs> so smart, baby. Nothing. Nothing, really? Oh, I listen. 97. Ooh, Merlin Sand. All right, Merlin Sand, yo. You have a fucking dab mat coming, player. Or not a dab mat, I'm sorry, a uh, heat mat. I These mean, things you can wipe your be, thing but... with or whatever. Yeah, no, don't put your I dads on that. <laughs> Sorry. If you guys run out of toilet paper, you got something to wipe your thing with. Mm, okay, okay. Um, no? Yeah, yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Carrie, oh, oh. Uh, That's why I keep you around. This is great. <laughs> all right, all right. Now, um, we do have... Uh, One last. Well, all right. Oh, well, no. There's, there's, there's the, the fucking, the other homie, Andrew Pollock, man. Awesome glass worker and educator, but uh, his studio in, um, in New Orleans is incredible. There's, like I said, I really love this picture of Rashawn, the homie, working out there. Um, he had a great class. So many cool classes he has out here. Look at like this, for example, with freaking Kevin O'Grady. If you don't love Kevin yeah. O'Grady, then you need to Google Kevin that's, O'Grady that's and fall one. in love all over again or whatever. Um, Kevin and O'Grady's this, amazing. And, and you've got a demo from Andrew Pollock from the Glasscraft and Beat Expo, right? Well, we 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 would have this year, but it got canceled. I mean, the oh, ones you on you if you mean on if you mean the ones that we've already. We've already released multiple demos from Andrew on Torch Talk, if that's what you mean. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, I thought you meant if there's something waiting. No, there's nothing waiting. Um, well, it's postponed. It'll, it'll be coming. Yeah, anyways, uh, man, Andrew's the fucking man. And the studio, guys, let me see if we can uh, pull this thing up here. Uh, what, no, where is it? All right, I don't know. This is just like a shop and shit. I gotta find a picture of the shop. Where is it? Um. Well, let's just trust me. It's an incredibly beautiful studio in New Orleans. We're just gonna keep picking that shit. Let's do this. Clickety clack. One ninety one. Oh. 31? I got a... Th no. Fit rate one. Alright. <laughs> Karen, the music that you can't hear is dope. I'm sure it is. Yeah, you're pretty on it. <laughs> right, you know? No. Come on, guys. Ooh. What? Oh, Ooh. no, no. 141. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh. No. <laughs> oh, 12? Nope. No? Nope. No. Oh, oh. Where is it? Nope. I don't see it. Ooh, nope. 164. This is a hard earned $100 for you folks. Right, seriously. But you guys, for real, the homie has an incredible uh, lineup of classes. I mean, already he's had some amazing classes that I'd already wished I could have made it out to, especially last year. And what a great place to, to go check out. Right? You know? Not right now, but you know. Woo, man. No, more you nowhere got... right now, you know. 
Everyone stay home. The whole world is locked down, but not us. Man, I want to play games. This is this is taking forever. Oh, oh, there is one of four for this one, but it's probably all 100s. This is, come on, guys. <sighs> I got a bath to take later, yo. I got these new Epsom salts. <laughs> <laughs> Oops, uh, no, never mind. Uh, nope, nope, nope. <laughs> I just can't believe how long it takes sometimes. What? What? It's oh. ridiculous. This is like in Vegas when you play a slot machine, you know, and you lose 80, 100 times in a row. And then, and then finally you hit that penny slot and get a dollar back. Yep, yeah, then you keep playing. We wouldn't know anything about this, Ooh, me and Carrier, oh. up hard on Vegas. No, we only... We only play when they give we us free play money. With free money. Yeah, and then and, <laughs> and then every time we've won enough. Oh shit, Carl. 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 The winner, Carl. Yeah, you did it. Carl you did it, dog. Finitieri. Yeah, man. Finitieri. All right, Carl. Um, hit me up, man. I'm gonna get you in touch with Andrew, and you guys can work this out. Um, this I assume that he's not like, like. Um, oh, what do you mean you can't make it to the next class? Sorry. No, no, I'm sure that, like, uh, if you see a class there that you want to take and, you know, make a trip of it, I know it's a random thing, but, like, that studio is incredibly gorgeous, and he has, like, <laughs> like you know, world-class level educators out there teaching, so tuck that one away. Um, Man, I feel like we need to get into the game going. I know I got all these sticker packs to give away. Let, well, I, maybe I'll like, pick some numbers while the game is popping off or whatever. Because it's time to get it. Do you want to play a different game, guys? Yeah, let's check out something else. All right. What else do we got? I got this is like a new pack we got. No, I said not a new game. Let, let me out of here. There we go. Yeah. Okay. I don't know what this game is, but Survive the Internet sounds interesting. Uh-oh. Right? Uh-oh. Yes, I'm sold already. Here we go. What? Art portfolio, no nudes. How boring. Right, here we go. Pro virus software. <laughs> this is crazy. I don't know what's about to happen, but we're going to do this. TVQR. Okay, we got audience members. Big ups to the 81 people who are still with us. This is right. tight. I'm so happy that this many of you decided to stick around. I I was like, Absolutely. man, every all the events are canceled. I just I wanted to do something where this many of us could get together and kick it. You know, it's it means a lot that all y'all sticking around, and have some fun, and have a laugh together. I'm still getting the volume levels set and all this type of thing. I'm so, I, I don't know how to work this quite exactly, but we'll get the we're, we're going to do this until this whole world gets back to normal and keep having a f beautiful fun time together every Tuesday. Thank you, Ooh. homies. All right, here we go. Let's do this. Let's play this new game together. We got a full all right, you can still get into the audience. Get into the audience. Go ahead Twelve of us so far in the okay. audience. All right. Love it. To steal Nike's tagline, let's do this. All right, let's see what this game is about. Oh, must be good. <laughs> There's a cat playing a piano. Welcome to the net. My right, here we go. Todd, and Tutorial I time. My banking password. Give up? Okay, it's Todd78. Oh, I did it again. In case you need some instructions, <laughs> check out this quick tutorial. Hey guys, what's up? Party Boy 7 here to teach you how to play <laughs> Survive the Internet. So, in each round, you'll get a prompt on your device. Go ahead and answer it. Those responses will then be sent to another player. The objective is to twist these words in the most ridiculous way possible. So, oh my if my God. friend Paul said selfie sticks are, quote, super dumb, then I would take him out of context. Say we're on a news site. Their super dumb would be an outrageous comment to what headline? Oh, I got it. Everybody then votes on whose comment looks the most absurd. <laughs> I get rewarded for writing the oh, twist, I'm excited and for this Paul game. gets some pity points for looking foolish. The person with the most points at the end of the game wins. Okay, that's it. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. Please.
I feel so empty inside. <laughs> Let's start things off at a uh, web forum. <laughs> so you should be seeing a prompt on your controller. There are no wrong answers, so just answer honestly. As an audience member, I am just sitting here all of Twitter. All right. I'm in. <clears throat> There we go. You're getting another player's answer on your device. Take these words out of context in the most ridiculous way you can. <laughs> so for you players, you may have 10 seconds less than you think you have. No stress. Mm hmm. Paul is one one of those moves today, huh? Mm hmm. Man, the earth is just getting trashed over and over again. Kinda got like an eco-villain theme here. Story of our life, life what? Uh-oh. <laughs> oh no. Okay. <laughs> Sorry guys. <laughs> Message from mom. Do you regret your decisions? It's too late now. <laughs> oh really? <laughs> <laughs> That seems a little. Yeah, I'm very confused by that last one. Mm. Oh, eh, dad's ex wife. Fiance. Who looks the most ridiculous here? Hmm. Place your All vote right. now. Who looks the most ridiculous is my choice. All subjective. Um. So the whole point is to like make people look bad on the internet, I guess. This is amazing. This happens to me all the time. <laughs> no. Shout out to the guy who accused us of <laughs> revealing trade secrets and such. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. That guy would be an expert at this game. You, Dakota, and what, Paul Taylor are on the same yeah. right there, right? Yeah, my boys. Yeah. Trade secret dogs. Trade secret crew. Right, so. Here's what people think. And here's how the audience voted. Here's who twisted Is your words. Is it good to look ridiculous? They get some points. Yes. And you, the victim, get some pity points. All right, just figuring out the language so here. So that just happened. Best burn. <laughs> <laughs> Best burn. Who should I be the most? <laughs> Let's find all out. Right, all this right. is officially glass related now. Oh wow, look at this. Yeah, good job. <laughs> Swazi P, you got him. You burned him. Okay, let's move there on. There we go. Let's go to a video site. Ooh, surviving Ooh. internet videos, huh? 
You're getting another prompt. Go ahead and be candid. This is our safe space. Hmm. All right. The question on your device. This is for all the sticker packs. The winner of this gets all four sticker packs because I'm tired of this giveaway shit. All four sticker packs? I'm just kidding, but that's, okay, that's right. how I feel. <laughs> well, you could always choose a number in the middle of the game if you wanted to. You did say you might and, and if and if I'm feeling extra I hope this nice, you. take this quote out of context so it makes its author look ridiculous. If you're extra nice, I'll I'll throw in a, a cup of Epsom salts with coconut flavor, so, so you can make only, your only only if they promise to take a bath. Yeah, like what the fuck is in this bag? <laughs> the hell is on this? Why? Mike <laughs> sent me bath salts. What the hell? <laughs> And they're really uh. bath salts. <laughs> Did you get my joke? Yes. Okay. Bam, I got him, baby. I think I got a, a burn. I don't know if it's the best burn, but it's a fucking burn. Okay, all right. You guys are doing great. We're doing great. This is awesome. Except for that person who's taking forever. Come on, purple hey, now, Epcot you know, guy. Because they look like practice. Epcot, right? Like Epcot Center? Feeling, yeah, <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> purple, purple Epcot. Zing. <laughs> Ty Harrison throw it. It says, throw in some hand sanitizer and toilet paper. Well, we did not pick up any hand sanitizer, but we could probably steal the uh, not baby wipes from the, from the register at the store. We got all kinds of toilet paper right here, yo. We're, uh, we could actually... I've got a bad feeling about this. Who's got <laughs> ISO for me? I need that 91 or better. <laughs> exactly. Hmm. <clears throat> Oof. Oh my. See, I don't know what this looks like as a as a player on that side, so. Mmm. I know, right? Making me hungers. Right? Oh no. <laughs> oh good god, okay, that's the burn right there. What? <laughs> 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 oh no. We're talking about eating that ass, I think, baby. <laughs> oh my god. Mm -hmm. Okay, alright. Okay, crawling in the nose now, huh? What? Hmm. Well, sometimes you got a tough match, you know. Yes. Here are your Somebody's candidates. saying we need to go now to the, uh, the hydro shop. I've heard about that. That's what. Yeah. There is one in Lincoln. Well, that's what I was telling you earlier. I was like, we gotta go to the grow shop. Yeah, yeah. Cause you can buy it by the gallon there. Carl says. Okay, so most ridiculous. Who looks the most ridiculous? All right, who's taking forever to vote? Can I click those buttons? No. Click. Boop, 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 boop. No. All right. This is not your control screen. What about the volume and the discrepancy? Is that people voting? Let's see who got the points. <laughs> oh, it's you again, Carrie. Oh, this way. Oh, 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 <laughs> Go for <carry> it! <laughs> I hope you weren't gonna run for political. Jake, okay. Go Jackbox.tv. Best, best burn. 
Uh -oh. Let's see what that round did to things. Somehow I'm just, I don't know. Make that green a little bit. There it is, it's TVQR. Yeah, Let's go to a <laughs> social networking site. <clears throat> now here we go. Another prompt is headed your way. Now get to it. Yes. It's not as good as the Fibbage music, though. How does everybody feel about this game versus the last game that we played? I think we might go back to Fibbage. Yeah. I have to admit, as an audience member, I'm confused because I don't see all the stuff that's going on in your guys' end. I imagine it's slightly more interesting as you're trying to make things up. Come on, baby. Let's do the twist. <laughs> Epcot Center shaking their heads and trying to figure out what they're going to say. I just burned him, baby. An extremely inappropriate burn. Uh-oh. Yep. Right. Let's see how this pans out. Yes. Oof. Uh huh. Uh huh. Okay. <laughs> oh no. Oh, Hindu. Oh goodness. Are you that hard up? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sending that person any Epsom coconut salt. <laughs> oh, no. Oof. Uh, okay. Eunuch is spelled wrong, by the way. Yeah, yeah, it is, but I don't know how you're supposed to sleep with all these women. Civic yeah, yeah, that's true. Now. Okay, so grossest. Wait, grossest? No, most ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> it's got to be say. the dick in the kiln. Come on, give it up, baby. This say, is all me. Putting the hypothermic dick in the kiln. Is <laughs> <ridiculous>. <laughs> yeah. I mean, sitting on bubble scraps, it's theoretically funny, but how do you manage that? Because they're all like floating around, so you've got to have a flying asshole. So. Yeah, I think you're picturing this much too in depth. <laughs> well, I'm just trying to, just trying to be objective here. Let's see how everybody voted. <laughs> Oh, look at that. Oh, my word. 
Put it in the kiln. Put it in the kiln. <laughs> Ultimate sacrifice points for me. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Let's check the scoreboard. <laughs> All right, so feedback from the audience is this is not as an engaging as engaging a game we as We only have time for member. one more, so All let's right. end it at a... But as I let everybody know, this is the Photo first sharing thing. Oh, so. The points are worth double this round, so literally anything And apparently Gene thinks we're all engaged, so... All right, here's your last prompt. <laughs> you know what to do. And now we know, and as they say, knowing is half the battle. We American hero. <laughs> it's time to take the gloves off. Really go for it this time. Get your answers in, folks. Twist those comments up. Guys, I have breaking bad news. Party City has made the decision to close all 757 of their corporate retail stores throughout the United States. However, are we going to party on Tuesday nights now? You heard it here first. I'm sorry. The you know party what? is over. Speaking of. Pig Daddy Pork But the witch. Pig Daddy Pork Witch is back. Okay, only a Pig Daddy's. You know, it's a good thing I have a large costume box in the basement. I think maybe next week or the week after we should think about digging through that and using it. <laughs> but baby, I've got a disco outfit that you really must use. Anything on? Contain my excitement. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what? What? <laughs> okay. Sounds about right. Oh, look at that cute little ferret. Or <laughs> 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 oh, no. oh no! Oh goodness. I knew you would like Western Nebraska then. Santos. <laughs> okay. by this round, but can only guess that you were given a picture to caption. No, you didn't get to see the picture, actually. It's lame. Oh. Hmm. Well, I guess you did in the second round, but you came up with the things before you saw pictures. Okay. It's right. voting time. Hmm. Well. Definitely on topic. All right, man, I'm about ready for a fibbage round. We'll pick some numbers here, though, for uh, the uh, thing there, as it were, right? Yeah, yeah. All right, I'm just gonna like, pop it up while this bullshit's happening, maybe, I don't know. No, no, yeah, it's about to no. end. Click. All right, 183. Not no. Okay, here are the verdicts. Oh my god. Got him. <laughs> <laughs> oh. 
All right. What happened? Oh, buddy. It all comes down to this. <laughs> all right, Dripst. I want you to send me uh, your address, man. MikeMason at gmail.com. Well done. This has to be Let's one of your all-time highlights. Yeah, and... Uh, oh, shit's still happening. Oh, no, no, no. We're going to exit that. Yeah, um, yeah. It's time to switch back to... Yeah, I still got more of these these bad boys to give away, so let's pick another uh, winner. Okay. And we'll play another game, and then we'll give the rest away, and then we'll call it a night, because we can't be here forever. We got baths to take and uh, ramen to what eat. Is this? I get horny. Was that a thing? Did we see this already? What? It's showing in my screen. It says I get horny. Uh, and the, answer, the answer is keep your hands off my genitals, please. Wait, what? Where, where is this happening? I don't know. It just popped up. It must have been like the game recap or something. Is somebody sexually harassing you through the game, baby? What's happening? Well, his name is Mike. <laughs> what? So... What? What? <laughs> oh, I see this thing. Mine just has a dude named Mark. Uh, this one says Mike. I don't know. I've got some fucked up looking suitcase or some shit. What is this thing? This must be like the game recap. Alright, oh, anyway, go. regardless. You were saying? There it is. Oh, okay. Yeah, that was me. But yeah, look at that. We can review the entire game. Oh, I don't even have it up. Never mind. Yeah, look at this. You can pop a thing up that has a thing. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my. What are your religious views? Woke as fuck, bruh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then people are right. That's not very cool, hooker. This game is terrible. All right, all right. Um. Yeah, get me out of this. Oh, yeah. So folks seem to like the uh fibbage better what about bracketeering though well, i don't know do, do should we do explore another game folks i mean there's there's like almost 60 people still hanging out so what do y'all think do we want to choose another nah. game to explore Involved, you want to do it? Is there like a preview? If you'd watched longer, maybe yes, I don't know. Yeah, if people liked Fibbage, we could just go back to that and then you and I could explore these games for next week, maybe. This sounds fun. Let's try this. Here we go. Okay. All right. Do we pick another sticker pack though? We got to keep going. Where's the where's my random yeah, dot? I don't, I don't know. We All right, clickety clack. Everybody, so. 153. There we go. Wait. Oh. Folks, if you're in the chat room and you want to play Jackbox.tv JLPD, this is your chance. You can play with Mick. Pam, 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 pam. All right, here we go. Click 142. Nope. Nada. Six. Nope. 148. Damn, dogs. 
Nope. Yeah. Nope, we got five. Uh, 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 uh. Oh, everybody's in. Is there already how many players? There's Wow, we got 13 out of 16 players. Oh, there can be more. Don't start yet, then. Okay, yeah, no, I'm waiting. I... 120. Like there it is, John Trembling, man. Get me a, get at me for a sticker pack, dog. Oh, John. Hell yeah, all right. Three more spaces, and if nobody else hops in, I am going to take one of those spaces. Get in, baby. Get in this game, girl. Come on. Well, I, I like to make sure that people get a chance to get in there. Oh, you know, shit. Like, I don't want to take somebody's spot. If there are 16 people no. in the audience that want to play, I will be an audience member. But... Three, two, all right, I'm in. Oh, I'm in. I'm in a game. Ca Cal? All right, yep, That's Cal. You? Can't lift me. You're short Cal? For, short for Calyx Ann, you know? Oh, okay, gotcha. All right, so there's one more spot if anybody joins here shortly, but... Yeah, I'm going to give it a 10-second countdown. 10, yeah, yeah. 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, let's do this. <laughs> We doing this? We've got big fun waiting to be unleashed. We'll be posing some of life's most important questions. What? Your answers will be paired off in a no holds barred tournament. And your votes will determine which answers advance <laughs> in the bracket. As we whittle down to our championship winner, this is Bracketeering. Hell I'm yeah, sending right. the topic of our first bracket to your devices now most kick-ass name to give a baby <laughs> that reminds me i still haven't named my son and he's 27 years old type in the best answer you can think of and hit send if your answer wins the entire bracket you'll be rolling in moolah by the way you can join the audience and play along by going to jackbox.tv and entering the room code all right i'm in This game seems pretty fun, actually. I'm liking this. This will work. <laughs> Time's running out. Come on, new. Your answers are being paired off into one-on-one -on -one matchups. Oh, what? That means it's time to sidle up to the prediction table. All right, here we go. On your device, you'll see one of the up <laughs> If you can predict the answer that will get the most votes, you'll earn some sweet, sweet moolah. Oh, my. <laughs> oh, and don't forget, if you think the odds are stacked against your own answer, you can still get some cash by predicting the correct winner. This is great. I love this already. <laughs> this is my new favorite game. <laughs> okay. All Time's right. running out. That's time at the prediction table. It's time to dive into our first bracket. Oh boy. Use your device to vote on which you think deserves to win. But don't forget, if you change your mind, you can change your vote. <laughs> this one seems like it's over before it's done. I may have to change my own name to one of these. Any prediction winners just made a killing. This game is awesome. Our next matchup. <laughs> it's weird that this is my job. What the fuck? About changing your mind. It's really going back and forth. I can't believe that Bracco is out ahead of Brundleman. The clearly more badass name. Brundleman? Yeah. What exactly is Brundleman? I don't know, but it just sounds cooler than Rocco. Rocco. Anyways. Okay, alright. We have a few lucky winners. Let's see what tensions are mounting over in the mm, Omega Conference. Let's see what's going on here. Brackets. Oh, come on. I'm definitely trying to name my kid Bitch Slap. <laughs> Thunderfuck is clearly an audience favorite, though. Wow. Can't hate on that. That's a good one, yes. too. 
This one's looking My over. My baby needs that slap down. <laughs> Thunderfuck. Accident, Jacob Reynolds says. <laughs> <laughs> It's time to round out the bracket with this vicious matchup. Hunty. <laughs> G T T Python. The lead All right, if that was Nacho hands. Man, then I think I could go for that. But you know, just running out the clock now. <laughs> what a whirlwind! I had to vote against myself. That was a good one. Before we get on to round two, it's time to make another prediction. But a kid named GTT Python would be pretty hey, awesome, you got right? A new matchup waiting for you on your device. Predict the one you think is gonna win. Thunderfuck was pretty baller earlier. Yeah, I gotta give predict that one. Tank strain. <laughs> All right. Time's running out. Time's up at the prediction table. And these cats would just walk away. Let's jump back to our for round two. <laughs> this is one for the ages. And upset in the making. Really? Will we mm -hmm. see a final? Rocco? Fuck Rocco. That's a dumb name. No offense to any audience members named Rocco. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Ty says glass answers only next round. This could be the answer to beat, but let's check out the competition. Cecilia agrees. Only one can come out on top. Yeah, Thunderfuck was really, man, that was a good one. <laughs> Somebody's gonna clean up on that. Yes, I believe the children are our future! <laughs> I haven't seen my name up there once. And now the definitive <laughs> matchup. Which of these baby names is indisputably kick-ass? <laughs> this one's looking over and already. Oof. <laughs> poor, poor Chuck Norris Jr. <laughs> This one seems like it's over before it's done. We have our first winner. <laughs> Go West. Let's see those scores. <laughs> Nick is killing it. I didn't know it would only be three things. I just typed my name in. It's time Good for the Nick. blind bracket. All right. We'll start with just the category. Name any video game character. Go ahead and write the first thing that comes to mind. We'll see the real bracket title after you answer. Hmm. All right, 24 seconds to go grab a snack. I'll be right back. <laughs> Ramen takes 24 seconds. <laughs> yeah. Time's right. I, I went with a uh, fantasy video game character based on a, a glass blower. Let's see what this bracket is really Thank about. You. Most deserving of being played by Cecilia's Tom Hanks in a new movie right trilogy. Here. Time to get in those predictions. <laughs> I'm 
feeling Why? extra good about my answer. <laughs> I'm feeling good about my answer right now. Mm -hmm. I knew I could take this in the right direction. Oh my, I really <laughs> hope it's not what I saw. Time's running out. Oh, prediction table time is up. Time to get it on. Okay, all right, okay. No one thought it would be this close. Who the fuck was Fly Blue for? I don't know. I think it's fantasy. I, I, I am. I put in a fantasy game. I did not see that coming. Because it sounds like it should be, but it's supposed to be. That's not even a real character, goddammit. Right, it's a fantasy character. Next up. This Par matchup clearly. is bound to happen. <laughs> I am on the edge of my seat. The clock is running out on voting time. A seesaw battle if I ever saw one. <laughs> Come on. Looks like everyone got this one wrong. I have the future and the, or the present and the past and the year at the same time. Why don't we see what's going on on the other side of the bracket? <laughs> Shaka, huh? Like I said. <laughs> I mean, come dumpster is an obvious choice. Obviously. <laughs> Only a few seconds left to vote. We've got a tie. Show your support for your answer by tapping on your device as fast as you can. Mm. Tap as many times as you can. Give it to me. Come on. The tie has been broken. <laughs> Finally, we can go on with our lives. All right. <laughs> There's cash if you predicted this one. It's time to round out the bracket with this vicious matchup. I mean, you gotta go with Luigi with three eyes instead of just one, right? <laughs> Get those last second votes in now. Dude, if I would have tapped on my answer, I would have got some more. That was a clash of the titans. Oh, I know. Before we get on to round two, it's time to make another prediction. <laughs> I really want to see Tom Hanks play Solid Snake. <laughs> Is that a G.I. Joe character? What? Is that a G.I. Joe character? No, baby. It's from Metal wait, Gear Solid. Wait, wait, wait. It's one of those... Time's running out. Hit the other person games where you're all final... There you go, Carrie. Final, yes. final Fantasy? Time to Is step away from the prediction table. That's for Let's you. Let's jump back to our bracket for round two. Not Final Fantasy, then, is what you're saying. Nope. Okay. Votes are incoming. A oh, real tug of war! It's anyone's game! Somebody really, really wants this Sly Boofer character to exist. <laughs> more dangerous swings than an abandoned playground! Well, I don't know who that is, but I like the sound of him. <laughs> Sounds like he knows how to have a good time. <laughs> On the sly. <laughs> like, what? Sly Boofer? Yeah, you know, Sylvester, the guy who always puts stuff in his ass. What are you talking about? The lead keeps changing hands. No, it doesn't. Solid Snake is all over this. 
This one's looking over. <laughs> you will not be denied. Thank you. All right, here we go. <laughs> This final matchup will determine what video game character is most deserving of being played by Tom Hanks. Hmm. <laughs> I think they need to combine new characters. Yes, Solid Snake would be great. It's just like it could. It's actually like just plausible enough. <laughs> just running out the clock. That's how you do it. Hell yeah. Let's check out that scoreboard. Mmm, <laughs> still in the game, baby. Alright, that's right, I did pick Princess Peach earlier. That would have been really funny though if Tom Hanks had to pre play Princess Peach, but clearly nobody likes my gender bending suggestion or whatever. Yeah, we're just not quite that um, mm -hmm. progressive. That's all I'm saying, man. I'll give it ten other ten years. Then <laughs> Tom Hanks can play Princess Peach. I want to live in that world. What name? Any time? What? Oh man, that's bullshit. Somebody else picked mine like. and they were like, somebody else already put that in, you gotta pick another. When no I had like way. one was second left. Wait, no, was it seven ten? No, wait. I'm all cash is whatever. This round, so make these choices count. <laughs> yeah, that's the one, man. That's the one. That's my shit. Good job, whoever got to it first. <laughs> that's a good one too. <laughs> Running out. <laughs> That's time on the prediction table. It's go time. Overwhelming support. Oh my. <laughs> An upset in the making. Only a few seconds left of vote. Sexy time. <laughs> yeah. The human heart is a fickle beast. <laughs> Next up. Oh, good lord. What Wait, is this? this? Again? Did we already do this? I am on the edge of my seat. <laughs> the clock is running out on voting time. <laughs> They're on fire. <laughs> Let's see what's happening over on the other side of the bracket. Uh oh. Man, it's gonna be a pretty brutal battle of 420s. Yes, it is. <laughs> they really should have seen this coming with this uh, question. <laughs> this 
it's probably people having like a sailboat show or something, you know, and they're like, oh, in the vernal equinox, yo, for navigating, you know, some bullshit. I don't know, I'm just saying. Man, y'all need to get more creative, even though it's the exact same thing I tried to pick. Yeah. Are you shaming now? No. Quackity, quackity, duck, duck, quack. Shame the shit out of these motherfuckers. <laughs> Not as plain. <laughs> she took my answer. Yeah. We're changing that shameful. Again. Some shameful shit. What can you do? Best time to suggest meeting for a duel. Oh, Get God. those predictions in now. <laughs> All right. I, I just got to keep see. it simple. Yeah. This is where um. it gets lame. <laughs> this is where Mike goes to make some cheesy ramen or whatever. I was just thinking. Is that what you were thinking? <laughs> thinking like something. Mike wants ramen. More like Carrie went. Carrie could even the Time's eat running out. Jacob Reynolds, best of bitches. Time's up at the prediction <laughs> table. Let's jump back to our bracket for round two. Mmm. Now we got a battle. Now we got a. We got a. Mm. <laughs> numbers. Folks. These numbers coming in making me laugh. Okay, alright, alright, alright. <laughs> Wins, but it really comes down to, like, I mean, that's my kind of duel. <laughs> Shut you down, you know what I mean? Even 420 and 420, or... This is why we do this, folks. <laughs> <laughs> Time to suggest meeting for a duel. An upset in the making. <laughs> Only a few seconds left to vote. <laughs> that match had more comebacks than Liza Minnelli. <laughs> <laughs> One last switch. The best time to have to live over and over and over. I hope your answer still makes best sense. Best time to have to live over and, and over and over. You know, this is really a toss-up. Hmm. Best time to have to live over and over. Yeah, I think you know where my head's at on this, baby. Over. 420 for the show. I'm just playing love. That, that's what I was thinking. No. Yeah, like taping. <laughs> 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 Winner. <laughs> all right, nicely done, Wes. Good suggestion. Let's see who won it all. All right, look like Wes get a sticker pack too. I guess. <laughs> I'm not gonna hate. All right, and uh, you know, guys, let's um, let's pick another uh, pack for the homies in the audience. You know, who weren't uh, in the game or whatever. Oh, they're still chilling. Yeah, let's uh, yeah. We'll exit this out and uh, we're disconnected. Let me out of here. Let me go. <coughs> Let me go away. He says that all the time. He doesn't mean it. Oh, baby. It's so funny. <laughs> all right. All right. There's your lovely face for the homies out there. Yo, thanks to everybody who tuned in and made this thing into a, like, you know, like I said, I wanted to do kind of the, uh, the torch stock experience. And I hope you guys have had a peaceful time and a glassy time and some fun. Um, like I said, I wanted to, to pick just one more uh, sticker pack winner. I really appreciate you guys tuning in and making this thing a, uh, a real party and even if we we're not going to get to have events anytime soon man you know i'm more than happy to keep having this party with y'all every damn week and you know let a fred know or whatever and you know maybe we can 
get this thing, you know, I mean, gosh, just as many people tuned in today was perfect. Don't get me wrong. I just, I just don't want anybody to miss out on the notion that we have this party going on for all of us here in the community, do you know, whether there's going to be live events for a while or not. And, uh, as I've always had such a, such a great time doing this over the years and, you know, it's always been this part of the, you know, a big part of the, the audience, you know, who, for them getting to go to an event in the first place isn't in the cards because they live too far away or they're just, you know, living on the edge of the budget thing or whatever it'll be. And it's like, that's sort of all of us now because, you know, we, uh, there's not going to be any events for a while. And, but, it, you know, I see no reason that we can't keep getting together and having this great time. So... Yeah, kudos to everybody who showed up and all right, here we go. Come on. Did somebody not pick forty two? Uh, all right. See, well, four twenty. I see somebody saying they literally uh, picked forty two. Literally I picked forty two. Oh, is that it for the game? Forty one and forty three and I picked forty two. And was that that wasn't part of the numbers though, was it? That was uh I don't know. What else would it have been? No, it was from the game. Wow. It wasn't in the numbers. Yeah, no, I'm going to pick another number. Sorry, dog. Such a shame, Ty. Such All right. A shame. Such a right. shame. <laughs> <laughs> Carrie. Chickaback isn't in it for you this week. What a world. What a world. <laughs> All right, I don't see a six. Nope. One, eight, seven on a motherfucking cop. I was just going to say. I know, Carrie's always talking about shooting cops. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Damn, dogs. I can't believe nobody picked 187. Come on. That's like the coolest really? number. I mean, you're right. It's oh, like did somebody pick nine. one? There's a 17, a 101. 17. 21. I'm not seeing it, man. Nope. Gosh. One. How many people actually entered? There were like 100 people watching at that time. Nothing? 169? Nobody? Gosh. Y'all, y'all disappoint me. I'm just playing. <laughs> I think people in chat are hungry. They want breadsticks, not stickers. I know, man. I ran off and grabbed this whole, <laughs> this whole thing with these cookies that Carrie brought home. But like, I don't know, man. They're like these oatmeal cookies. And I just feel like if I just put some milk on these motherfuckers in a bowl, I'll be like, oh, that's that new cereal oh, from Cookie cereal, Crisp. Right? Oh, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, they're not like, they're very good. Anyways. <laughs> right. They're so not good that he eats them anyway. I eat the whole tub, but you know that's because that that's a I'm a out of necessity, obviously. Yeah. Wait, sixty-two. There we go, Jacob Reynolds. All right, yay. Jacob to the riggedy Reynolds. Um, yeah, man, hit me up, Mike Mason at to the gmail dot com. Um, I'm gonna wrap it up there, yo, homies. Thanks to everybody who tuned in, making this thing a party every week, and you know, just kind of made it an obvious choice to do what we're doing. I'm like, well, let's just make this thing a little bit longer, and you know, do the game thing. That's been a lot of fun for everyone. I hope you guys had a good time. Let me know your thoughts on this this whole format change and the the, the uh, starting an hour earlier and such. And you know, we're gonna keep going a little bit later, and you know, just like we're doing now. So. Yes, I hope you guys had a great time. Thanks to everybody who stuck with us to the end. Uh, I really, I love and appreciate you guys out there. It, it's, man, you guys have just, this is, this party has been one of the best things in my life over the past, you know, the years we've been doing it. So uh, thank you. I'm going to send you off to Carrie uh, for a good night. And then, yeah, we'll be out this game. But thanks, y'all. Appreciate you. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. Always glad to say good night and welcome and goodbye. I don't know. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, Dakota, for joining us. That yeah, awesome thanks to Dakota. Us, Hell yeah. Um, giving us all a play-by-play, -play, and we hope to do more artist talks. And with the Torch Talk format, Torch Stock format, and the upcoming lineup, uh, hopefully we'll be announcing that. Right well, I don't know if there'll be a lineup now, but I mean, we have a lot of amazing <laughs> stuff coming up. We're going to keep it, keep it coming, though. Um, gosh, I mean, we got the David Sandage gas demo coming up, an absolutely shocking uh, dragon sculpture, like the, the wings this guy does are through the roof. Um, there's a lot of stuff coming up. The on stage thing from Vegas with uh, an 
there's a lot of stuff coming up next month um anthony charles making a cup on the lathe i mean there's so much cool stuff that is gonna drop here and yeah no we're not we're not gonna uh, miss a beat here whatsoever so yeah uh, like i said i'll leave you with carrie for a final good night and thanks everybody no it's obviously the end of the night my wine glass is empty that's it that's it thanks again for joining us <laughs> next week for the next episode of torch stock much love homies peace <laughs>